Well, we are back. Oh, we're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, (laughs) we got a special, special, Jesus, special (laughs) guest. Another one. Ian Mishna is with us. You just pull it out of your ass like that, huh? <laughs> You're just sitting down and just boom. I gotta get it, it I gotta get it cracking. Yeah. You know, yeah. I gotta get no it. No warnings, going. no nothing. No. No. So at what like, point are we gonna change that intro? Like at what point you people know what? just I, just fucking you know get what? over it's it? It's funny because I thought about that. I said, you know what? Should I switch well, it yeah, up? Yeah, you in do 20... it a hundred times. I could not think about it. Well twenty twenty is a yeah, whole yeah. new year. Should I It's a new decade. Should I do so... yeah, a new deck? Should I do something different? Like should we switch it up a little bit? And then I get and then I get scared. I don't know. Yeah, but you know, a while to perfect. But the, you're yeah, gonna lose. I, you're gonna lose people if you keep doing the same thing over and over anyway. So you might as well get new people changing it up. I, you and know I'm not I, just talking about the intro. I'm talking about whatever you want to do. Kelly. You know? yeah, yeah, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, Kelly. Yeah. I, yeah. Go, I look at Kelly. I'm like, cut the dude. No, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why, I love Kelly. No, we're on the we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're on the same yeah, page. Yeah, Trust yeah. me. No, I really do like Kelly. Okay, he brings like the cheer that you guys need. Like. You look like kind of bum I'm, right I'm now. Cat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's just be honest, dude. You know, he's just recovering right now. I never, I never even ask him if he's okay. Yeah, yeah, I, no. just, I let him be. Like, we've only met a couple of times, and I'm just like, is he mad at me already? Did I say something? You know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's funny because, well, I, I also think that um, it's just kind of a, a quirky intro. And I yeah, yeah. also think it kind of sets the mood. You yeah, know, it's like, it's hey, like now. hey, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we can sit here and, you know, have a, you know, a meaningful conversation, but right. also have fun. Right. You know, kind of sets the tone a little bit. Yeah. That, that's kind of what I think, you know, could be wrong. You know, people could hate it. I don't know. Well, I mean. The intro was just fully just happened. It didn't like you didn't plan on. No, anything. no, yeah. it just kind of. So it took like thirty plus episodes to get that intro. Yeah, yeah it was like just kind random. of morphed over time. Yeah. Ian Mishna, <laughs> Mishna, <laughs> Mishna's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, Wait, before you start, how, I, I brought you guys a gift though. Oh, we're going with gifts right away. Do we get gifts right away? Or we should you can, hey, whatever please. you want. Yeah, I got, I got a gifts for you guys. Okay, what do you got, bro? Ah, this one's Love a special that. one. This is a family recipe. Ooh. Ooh. I think I'm gonna give it to. Let's give it to Roger. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Is that a bottle of Jenkum? It's cold. No. <laughs> no, no, it's too cold to be. Okay. <laughs> He's already going off That'd the hi-fi hops. A little no, Jankum no, just, won't hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. Okay, Roger. Nothing to what your body's he's, had. He's, he's unwrapping he's it. Unwrapping. It's, it's a bottle of something. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of a rare one. It's from my family. It's kind of a, a tea recipe. It's got a gold Schmirnoff <laughs> ice. <laughs> Schmirnoff ice. Yes. They only had the jumbo, though. I was like, oh, I don't know if he's going to chug the jumbo. Yes, or if he even yeah, knows ice, the dude. rules. <laughs> I don't think I was worried he wouldn't know the rules, and I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" Oh, you gotta pound the whole thing, dude. Nah, he's not. You gotta get on one knee and pound the whole thing. If he wasn't bummed before, he's definitely bummed <laughs> now. Oh, I woke up sick this morning. Oh, you, you woke up a little yeah. sick, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Pl- I'm in the same boat. <laughs> so nice of you, dude. Uh, you fucking, know. Um, it's good for the throat. You know, I, 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 I want to say first and foremost, Ian. Oh, he's gonna do it. Oh, try. It. Oh, he's getting on his knee. Oh, oh fuck he's yeah. Go- okay. Well, Raj, don't drink. I don't the know whole. if I can chug that. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. You got to pass. <laughs> I want to check that either. That shit sucks. Yeah. Actually, it's not bad. First of all, most I want to say that um, I'm a big fan of Thank Jankum you. and Mag and all the shit that you're doing. Been cool. a big fan forever, but you guys have recently just been killing the game. <laughs> Thank I, you. You've been yeah. killing it a lot, but uh, you know, throughout the years. But I, I feel like recently you, you you're just you're 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 doing it. You guys are thanks. really going for it, bro. Thanks, thanks. I love it. That, that means so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But before we get into Jankum. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do it. And the meaning of Jankum and where you came up with all yeah, that yeah. stuff. And I don't know if you were an early adopter of, you know, kind of using Jankum. Yeah, 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 but um, yeah. Kind of we'll talk, about before, we'll talk well, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. talked about that. But but first, you know, I, I want to get into Ian's mind, you know, and see where he came from. How where, What makes him tick? You know, what, what makes Ian tick? Well, where do you want to start? Let's, I don't want to do the whole like four hours. No, like, no, 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 this will be quick. This let's, will be let's quick. Let's do the abbreviated. Were like, you ever sponsored? I was not sponsored. Did you ever skateboard? <laughs> <Yeah>. Never skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, he rollerbladed. Yeah, I was a rollerblade. I'm like, oh, let's start a skate mag. <laughs> <laughs> Rollerblading's way too crowded. I think, I wonder if there's, there was more money in rollerblading at some point than skateboarding. I could have, maybe. Then, then okay, mid 90s or early 90s. Like pros? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe when it first know. came out. Yeah. The early 90s. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I wouldn't know. No, it's, it's interesting. You did an article about that. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, but you grew, you, you, I grew, grew up, you grew up in New York and then you actually moved to um, Europe. Yeah. You did the research. When you're, uh, you came. You came loaded. I just know. I know a lot yeah. about you, bro. Okay. okay. I'm a big fan. Big fan. Big oh. fan. 
Well, well it's thank just weird. You, yeah. Two guys that interview people are like talking to each other. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's a little. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Just stay, stay in your you lane. You want to go? I want to go. We don't know who's going. Just stay in your lane right now. I'm in my lane. <laughs> Where am I supposed lane. to fucking go? Stay in your lane. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. Uh, but you moved to Europe when you were like 10 or something, yeah, yeah. right? So, and then you, you actually started skating out in Europe. Yeah, so I'm from, um, from New York. Mm hmm. My brother skated. He's 10 years older than me. So when I was like six, he was 16 and he was full blown skating. Like mm -hmm. that's like whatever, mid, late nineties. Gotcha. Um, so I, I would see that around and that was always like a thing. And I just like push arounds. And then when, uh, in eighth grade, I saw all the eighth graders skating. Oh, sorry. I was in seventh grade. They were in eighth grade. Uh -huh. And of course it just looks fucking you like first of all they're eighth graders and second of all they're skating it looks amazing yeah <laughs> so flipping the board yeah magical. and i saw yeah. that and like and i was like oh, i want to do that and i saw my brother do it 10 years when i you know 10 years ago and i'm like sure. oh that's the thing cool kids do you okay. know <laughs> right and um yeah so i so i got into skating that way mm -hmm. um and i was kind of quickly like we had a very small group of people because like the I went to an English speaking school mm -hmm. and it was a small school. And, this is uh, in Austria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was a small school, and um, you know, you, we had in in the to all of high school we had maybe four skaters. So progression was extremely slow. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was one really good kid, and then three of us kind of like skating, but using it more of just like ex like to explore the world. Sure. You know, yeah. like and not just skating, but like doing tricks. But no one was putting like pressure on anyone to do anything spectacular yeah, it was a toy you yeah yeah. Skate, yeah so we'd go out i i really liked the act of filming because i was you know we got i got like um what was my first video misled youth of course okay. i got misled youth my second one was um destroying america mm -hmm. which was like oh. the end part yeah, two yeah. kind of yeah and those were getting any sort of skate media or anything there was really hard like you got it and you held on to it and gold that's all you got for a year and i remember like people would go visit other countries or go back to the states and they come back after the summer you know ninth tenth eleventh grade and uh -huh. be like yo this is the shit you got to know about now you know this is the shit like even with music they'd be like oh yeah everyone's listening to this band ting back sunday now like here's the cd you know and i'm like oh shit okay cool just repeat yeah yeah, yeah. and then and then repeat and you know everything and that's mm -hmm. all you knew sure um but yeah there wasn't really like an infrastructure for me for in terms of like sponsorship and stuff out mm -hmm. there like i was kind of this american kid skating I wasn't as plugged into like the Austrian skate shops and that scene. And mm. it's kind of like Vienna is like, a, it's not really on the map, you know, it's like a kind of, no mm. one would visit. So there were was, your parents I, from Austria? N no, my, my dad is actually British. My mom's uh, from New York, but, okay. and her heritage is Chinese. But mm. so my dad, uh, we went there cause he got a job there. At Red Bull? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's like, it's funny, right? Like, yeah, they're headquartered there. Yeah. I would yeah. drink actually like a lot of Red Bull there because it was just like, it was really cheap too. You oh, know, I bet. It makes yeah. sense. It's like water. Everyone probably. drank, yeah. also the drinking age there was 16. So every, everyone drank vodka Red Bull. It was like 16 year olds just hopped up on fucking legal cocaine. <laughs> <flying around. laughs> yeah. Like we'd be going to clubs and we'd be 16 and a half and I'd look even younger than that because I still look young. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> people would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, so we just skated for fun and I eventually started filming a lot and we made a couple little videos, Sick. like, you know, but like, five, 10 minute videos. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't take it that seriously uh, until I actually moved back to New York when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And then I like kind of found a really, I went to SUNY Purchase, which is uh, like an art school mm. in New York, a little outside the city. Mm -hmm. And I found like a crew of people and um, I kind of got re reinvigorated about mm -hmm. it, you know, and I, I caught up and then it's been, I've just been skating like that. And for whatever now i'm 31 so right yeah you were just doing it because you loved it no you, you did you want to get sponsored or um, was that on your radar or were i you mean just... you want to get sponsored when you're like 13 to 15 and then like you kind of see the progression of everyone and i was like all right like i'm ollieing six stairs or seven stairs and i'm doing nose manis and i'm doing all you know I, I got all the basics and all that shit but then you see someone just like so much more ahead oh yeah and then immediately you're just like Put oh that's track. what skating yeah. is and this is what i'm doing i'm doing tricks you know, maybe yeah. I should write. Yeah, and 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 it was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you. It's good. It's. I talked about this recently with um, Mikey Alfred. You know, yeah, yeah. He was kind of just like, hey, I'm a filmer, and I'm like, hey, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that none of us were super good at skating because it's really hard to make a living on skateboarding. Yeah, and absolutely. I would hate. And it's like, where do you go after that? And that's something I can talk about later. But mm -hmm. having or building some type of like infrastructure or like nonprofit or educational resource where someone can go when they're 30 or 35 or 40 or whenever they want to stop and be like, Hey, I've been doing skateboarding. I kind of didn't go to college. I barely finished high school. Like, 
Can yeah. you help me? Like a trade school for yeah. like older mm-hmm. skaters. Or, or yeah. just, just a place where they can go and be like, can you help me build my resume? Mm-hmm. Can you help me find out what I'm good at? Yeah. Yes. And then can you help me like move forward? Because oh, yeah. it sucks to see. And I think that'll help in multiple ways. One way it'll help is that it'll keep the industry less bloated mm-hmm. because people won't be so scared to leave it because they'll say, yeah. hey, these people can help me. People won't be milking Finds it. my next place, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be healthier for the money for everyone and for the new generation to get their shot and the old generation to bow out gracefully. Yeah. Right. Um, and then secondly, you're giving second and third lives to people that maybe didn't think about it till that point. Yeah, right. Um, because I'm seeing people at the bar that are, that in when I started Jenkum, they were like the hot shit, and now it's nine years later, and they're, <laughs> they're kind of they're kind of like I know they're thinking in their head like, you know, what should I try to put more shine on me again? Should I step out? What's the next Am chapter? Am I TMing? And yeah. how many TM roles does the industry have? You know, twenty yeah. people, oh my whatever. God. Or That's a hard people. part in skaters' life is to yeah. figure that part out. Yeah, and, you know, l- you know n- losing your sponsors and all that, it, th- that could happen overnight as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it cannot be a, a milking situation. Right. It could just be a... Uh, Goodbye. Yeah, tomorrow right. you wake up and you're right. you're done. Yeah. You and know? to have that that lack of security, it's like it'd be. That's. I mean, I'm kind of throwing it out there. I haven't done my research because I'm so busy with Jenkins sure. stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, I'd love for whatever chapter or side chapter, or next chapter, mm-hmm. to so set like you up start something. doing like workshops. Yeah, or and workshops like, or something, some educational resource where yeah. it's like, hey, dude, like I'm a fan of you. Let me help you do this. Yeah. And also the pride. Yeah. Skaters of pride. Yeah, you know? yeah I know. It's, but it's tough. Yeah, but dude, if you're, you know, need money. there's a lot of people working shitty jobs. It's like, uh, dude, you could do way better than that. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Or at least, you know, you guys built something, you know, like mm-hmm. you're yeah. coming at the end and then you're, you're, I mean, you still have a board oh, and all Ian. that, but... <laughs> Is that Dick to say? Dick. He sells more boards now than ever. Yeah, well, that's true. I was going <laughs> to ask. He's getting less than ever, too. I was, was, was going to say. Hey, is I, it still, weird? I still come on, bro. <laughs> I was going to say, is it weird being bigger now than you were during heyday of skating? You know what? It, um, and I, I, I've said this before, and I'll yeah. just keep it short. It's, yeah. it's different. Yeah, because right. when, as a pro skater, you go out in the wild, you go to premieres and stuff. Right. It's just like, oh, hey, oh, I like your part. I like mm-hmm. your part, whatever. Like your skating. Now... We're in everybody's living room every day, and they feel like they know me. That's exactly yeah. what someone but saw they, you yeah. at the bar the other day, and they're like, "Yeah, I just went up to him, and I'm like, yo, what's up?'" And I'm like, "Dude, he doesn't know you. Like, you feel like you know him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but that, he's just a dude standing there who goes, who the fuck are you? You know everything I've said for three years.' Oh, they know us personally. Yeah. So yeah. now it's like you know the conversation's much different. They just want to talk to you mm-hmm. for you know an hour mm-hmm. instead of just like, hey, let me get a photo or whatever. Mm-hmm. So what make, what very it, different. What makes it so? crazy is that like we wouldn't be here unless we didn't skate in the first place right yeah. you know what i mean like we built our catalog so then we do this now people pay attention to it mm-hmm. if we didn't skate people would be like well who are these three dudes right yeah they're talking about skate definitely right. helped they're, yeah oh 100 yeah. percent. yeah and like yeah. It, i mean you guys are known people and you're in the in the kind of the me- the old school mecca or the current mecca mm-hmm. so yeah. no it's interesting and i'm surprised it actually took people this long to do something in a way People don't have patience. Yeah. And it's very difficult. Yeah. No, it's, I'm People not, don't not, yeah. uh, even understand how gnarly it is to get an episode out every week. Oh, That's it's fucking, And now we yeah. do two shows, so yeah, two yeah. weeks, you know, When I saw crazy. the two show set up in the beginning, I was like, oh, these guys are just setting themselves up to fail. <laughs> fail, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong and with And listen, them? we almost did. I almost yeah. fucking I had a heart yeah. attack. Yeah. When we started the experience, we were, he was so stressed out. Dude, oh, my God. It was oh, crazy. Dude. Every yeah. week I'm stressed out and people are like, yo, what's up? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to fucking make something happen here, you know? Right. And like, I feel like it's so responsible for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel so bad when it's not up to what I want it to be. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I feel like our trials and tribulations are yeah. very similar to yours. Yeah. Totally. And you, uh, grow, you know, Jake, yeah. you've been doing it, what, 10 years? Yeah. You yeah. Said, well, no, no, this is year nine. And then year February nine. 2021 wow. will be year 10. Okay. So that I'm trying to like plan Amazing. for that because I want to do something special. Amazing. For 10 years. Yeah. Hey, remember we, me and you talked about like, oh, we need to do like a, a beer pong tournament or something like that. Yeah. I pay, That's I, your special <laughs> no. thing you want to do in 2021? <laughs> this guy pulling shit out of his ass. <laughs> get out. Big beer it's pong what, tournament. Yeah, that's our, said, that's Jenkins' big Kelly. hurrah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 10 years of work every week. Oh, yeah, let's have a beer pong tournament. <laughs> Fucking bastard. That's the only thing he's looking forward <laughs> most to. Frat dude. Guy, oh, no, yeah, most yeah. frat I should have iced him. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I yeah. it's, not, it. it's not too late. But you did Classic. mention that. You did. Maybe not for Yeah, I mentioned it for like a New Year's thing. We should film a beer pong thing as a joke, but definitely not for a 10 year of. Something we're not good enough for that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, beer pong's not good enough for that. For <laughs> maybe you could, maybe could, fuck that game, dude. <laughs> seriously, maybe you could bring the guy on acid to the Olympics. It's, it's, it, I, we be, we beat the acid stuff. Okay, <laughs> Drug, drugs aren't cool anymore. Yeah, so, you know, okay. <laughs> dude, that part that piece was amazing, though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was that was you. You you brought a guy to street league who was on acid. Yeah, that one I'm I'm proud of, and that one people come back to a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. that's when I took notes of you guys. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I want to take a lot of credit for it, but I still ripped it off from someone else, which was Vice, Vice used to do an yeah. Acid series. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they were kind of in the middle of changing a lot and they were becoming much more like corporate, mm, whatever, no, political lead. machine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just take a playbook out of your advice 10 years ago yeah. and I'll go do that for Street League. Amazing. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much I spoke about it in, in the other thing. But well, what, how many, where'd you even meet the guy? Well, so I, I don't, I'm trying to remember. We either put out, Instagram wasn't around yet or it was very early. Mm -hmm. So we either put out a tweet or a Facebook or just like, hey, I don't know how we phrased it. Looking for someone that loves like, hey, looking for someone to trip or something. Like the most like caveman ass shit. Sure. sure. And, like I'm like, yo, if we get anyone to respond to this, he's a real butt nut, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> but, so so Is that a New York term but I don't know. It's, it's like a nine year old so term you bring back when you're thirty. <laughs> So someone responds, this dude named Zach, who he's a friend now, and he's, okay. he's a really great guy. And uh, he's a very intelligent guy, which I didn't expect, you know, for someone to respond to this sort of just, classified. Uh, some burnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought some fucking jackass was going to get on. So I meet up. With, he's just like, I'm down, dude. Let me know when. I'm down. I'm like, all right, New York, whatever day, there's a street league. We're going to do it. I'm like, do you have acid? <laughs> then I realized, I'm like, oh, where do we find acid? Then I'm like, fuck, I don't have acid. Right, so, right. So I'm like, you got acid? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. And I'm, and he's like, I do it all the time. I'm like, all right, great. Like, okay, all right, okay. All right, let's get this going. This so I tell, I, out. I tell my filmer Richard, I'm like, all right, wait, we got this acid boy. I called him Acid Boy. Okay. Yeah. I was like, we got Acid Boy. We're gonna meet him around the block from Street League, and I'm gonna pre-interview him to make sure there's no like. I didn't know if he was a total nut job or if sure. he had like real deal mental illness or he's okay. I didn't want it something that Take would be harmful. Somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or be harmful to him. And he goes there and it's terrible for him. Or maybe he was lying and he never did acid mm -hmm. and it was really, it would be detrimental because it's right. such a, like, a powerful drug. Yeah, of course. So I meet him and I pretty much ask him like a doctor would. I'm like, hey, so we're cool, like <laughs> mental illness. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I say it much more delicately yeah, than that. But, right. <laughs> but like, you're but stable. I'm, I'm kind of like <laughs> yeah. sussing out how much, how stable he was. Like you yeah. were, you were prepared to pull the plug. Oh yeah, yeah. This yeah. was a total, everything's a coin toss sure. to do, yeah. you know? Okay. Um, and so much stuff doesn't see the light of day. For everything mm -hmm. you see, there's fucking X amount of things that didn't make it. Totally. What was something that you tried to do but didn't make it and you're like, wish worked? Well, I might have to come back to that one. Mm -hmm. I want to think of a good example because okay, every, yeah. every week there's stuff that gets cut. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of like super epic. Oh, well, there's one. Re and then there's other stuff where you don't want to like there's one I just went on this trip for and it didn't pan out, but we're coming back to you do it. You don't want to yeah, yeah. 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 um, But it's going to be it's going to be good. But Okay. Um, okay. So the, yeah, the acid one, yeah, so he was fine, he checked out, I brought him to the stage, he took the acid, okay. and I'm just like, we didn't know what to do, we'd never done anything like this, I'm just like, oh, let's just, just start wait. filming, just, yeah. Yeah. just like, and so Richard was just like, go, <laughs> you know, like, and then I'm sitting there like, nothing cool is happening yet, you know, and it took a while, and we added mm -hmm. some effects, and he started tripping out, and then... It wasn't strong enough, so we're like, let's go. He's like, if I smoke weed, it'll enhance the effect. Okay. So we went, and he goes oranges. outside and smokes a bunch of weed, and then he's like, yeah. And then, Starts bugging out. Yeah, he bugs out a little bit, and it was in, the details were very discreet. So you had to, like, really zoom in on his face and kind of be like, get get his profile. Yeah. Sure. Because it's not like he was running around, but um, <laughs> but it was good. I was, I was proud of that piece. I think it, it stands up and it, it was fun. Yeah. And that, I think we started working with Street League after that. I think that ironically opened the door. I was going to ask yeah. if Street League actually responded to that. So uh, Street Cause League. Because they're all, they're all people that we know, right? Yeah. Street League, pretty much. Back then, it was like Street League was definitely where I was sitting. It was more taboo to work with a company like yeah, of that. Of course. Because right. like Jenkin was just like fucking, I don't have no background really. I mean, I have a little bit of background in media, which I can talk about. Mm -hmm. But in terms of starting your own business, doing something, uh, it's all made up. You know, I just went for it. Yeah. So we just renegated it. And so for Street League to see that and be like, oh, let's work with them was was weird. And also me trying to fit, how can we work with them and not yeah. look like total sellout weirdos too. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Stay true to your brand. Yeah. And, and, and but there's a way to do stuff like there that. There is, you know? as long as you're not breaking... Uh, your own morals or values. Sure. You know, as long if I was like, I never want to work with Street League my, and I said it here or whatever and I believe that. Yeah. And then I went and did it. Yeah, I'd be a total hypocrite and I wouldn't do that. But you could say you wouldn't never do it, but then you could do it. And then if you do it in your own way, it's totally yeah, fine. People I, I wouldn't, try, they wouldn't make that connection. I agree, but I try to stick by my word. Yeah. Like I try to be never like, say never. This, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I try I'm to stick to the DNA of like, how we believe there's of course a growth, mm -hmm. but you, it's still the same person. You right. know, I don't yeah. want to flip flop too hard yeah. mm -hmm. because um, I don't, don't know. It's just it. it's not what I want to do either. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So what did you end up working with Street League on? So Street League, 
Um, so we had a lot of advert. We had a couple advertisers in the beginning, but I think Street League was maybe when they came in one of our bigger ones. Hmm. And so they were like, "Hey, here's this budget. What can you do for us?" And we're like, "Oh shit! Like this is not 500 bucks. You know, this <laughs> right. is bigger than 500 bucks. And we'll get you to all the Street League events. And oh yeah, if you want to interview P. Rod or pull a prank on someone, we'll make it happen. I mean." Yeah. We're going to kind of like not be happy about it, but we're not going to be unhappy about it or, <laughs> as long as content's kind of good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would they would give me a budget and then I'd be like, OK, these are the 10 things, I think. And then these are the five kind of like coin tossy things. Mm-hmm. And they were very cool to oh, actually work with. Amazing. And um, so I went to the events and it was kind of stressful. Like every time I'm like, all right, what am I going to pull out of my ass? What am right. I going to pull out of my ass? Because <laughs> there's a certain amount of planning you can do. And then you just kind of have to make it up on the spot. Yeah, we run into that with the experience. Yeah. 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 We, we make up like, shit on. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Even sometimes we'll just be like, what do we want to do? But like, oh, we'll figure out when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. And just and roll. Yeah. Like, so one. I'm more of a freestyle guy. That's yeah, why. Yeah. I'm but not, you have like, to get plan... confident and good enough to, to freestyle. Yeah. yeah. You know, you could plan out what you want to do, but yeah, once you get there, boom. And no one wanted to like, Jenkin readers would have just been like, okay, so you sponsor by Street League now, and then you're doing an interview with P-Rod. Like, what is this sellout shit, you know? Yeah. Totally. So we would just do, like, funny skits, and we would genuinely prank the dudes. Like, one one time we put um, pebbles on the course when someone was skating. <laughs> like, shit like that. And, like, it was it was awkward. <laughs> yeah. uh, another time. Like a kitty litter? Just, right, yeah, oh we God. just did it. It was, like, kind of a sk- Instagram skit. You yeah, know? Right. Another time what happened... Um, Oh, our editor Christian went to the London Street League and he made fake uh, drink vouchers because like for towel, for skaters and towel oh, yeah. and whatever behind the scenes, they give you like five vouchers. Okay. Or whatever. So he goes and photocopies like a hundred, just gives them out to the homies and like we get all free drinks and, and they weren't really happy about that, but also it was great <laughs> content, you know, like at the end of the day for me, like good content, good video, good stories. Yeah. Yeah. That's Trump's everything. Of course. If a couple of people get... And that's the shit kids would be, be doing anyways. Like, yeah. Oh, I got a drink thing. Like, that's like sk- that's skating. Yeah. That's what I used to do. Everyone yeah. has tried to flip their bracelet around. Everyone's oh, yeah. tried to yeah. do yeah. this. They're like scotch yeah. taping. Yeah. Make yeah, a fake a- yeah. ASR patch. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the timeless shit. And that's what I love about skating. It's like those little just like the mm-hmm. hijinks playfulness, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, I mean, the skate, the act of skating has always been amazing and the heroes in skating. But then adding all the other just stupid hijinks is like that gets me off you know yeah, yeah, yeah. just oh, like yeah. all the videos like destroying america i think that, you know misled youth was just like fucking skate and then i saw destroying america i'm like oh there's this other side too yeah and it's and skateboarding is lighting a bush on fire and running a truck through it <laughs> sure, <laughs> like, yeah. like that's skateboarding too yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh well i want to do that stuff too and then after a while i just got obsessed with just hijinks stuff <laughs> I'm just like, yo, light the ramp on fire and do something. Right. <laughs> you know? We'll worry about it later. I don't even care about the trick. Just make the fire big enough where it looks cool from this angle, you know? Do you think that doing that stuff with Street League put Jankum on a different level at that point? Well, I think because I had to figure out how to work with um, kind of a more corporate, stingy, stringent, not stingy, uh, kind of a, yeah, just a more corporate brand. Yeah. It made you have to be more creative. Right. Um, cool. Because if you work with like a deluxe or a skate brand, they're like, yeah, cool, do whatever. Sure. And it's not necessarily game breaking because it's expected, yeah. you know. But with Street League, you really had to kind of think differently. And then the other people that work with them, I think like a trans world or something, it would make their coverage look way more boring. Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm out here throwing pebbles on the course and they're like interviewing someone else. And it's like, well, I'd rather watch the pebble guy. You know? yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> I would rather watch um, the pebble guy. So it, 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 it was a lot of growth. But mm-hmm. they, they didn't come, Street League didn't come into maybe year four of the business or five. So you're four. Yeah. So when you were, you said that you, when you were 18, you came back here, you went to college, yeah, you're yeah. doing all that stuff. And did you have Jankum, did you have a magazine, did you have a platform already in your mind at a certain point? Because you had to work jobs where you worked at a wine place or, you know, different little Mm -hmm. odd jobs to fund Jankum to have it started. So when did they, when did you actually go for it? um, Start paying yourself. Well, that's a whole other fucking story. Yeah. 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 Um, Street League. No, year no, four. <laughs> not even, year four. Yeah, maybe, maybe year four. No, I don't know. I'll, we'll get, we'll get there. Sure. Um, well, in, there was stuff I did before Jankum too, which was like, um, Jankum I launched actually when I was 20. Oh, I started working on it when I was like 19, 20 mm-hmm. and I launched it when I was 21. Gotcha. Um, so I did two years of kind of like prep and figuring it out and like, cause I had to teach myself how to make a website. Right. And then I wrote like 
50 articles before I even launched because I didn't want to launch it and be like, have no content. Hey, there's nothing yeah. here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great yeah. site. Come yeah. back next month. Yeah. 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 And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think I published four out of those. So, but I was writing mm-hmm. a lot um, because that was the easiest and the quickest and the thing that's closest to me. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't have a video camera. I don't have this. I'm not in California to take photos of the guys. Yeah, we can throw your opinion down on a piece of paper. Yeah, you yeah. Just right, right. go for it. Were you always a writer or did you have to? Because writing is either you got it or you got to train yourself how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm, art. I don't really even, I mean, I write and I've, I started that way, but I don't think I'm particularly gifted. I just worked at it hard and mm-hmm. I don't think my writing is particularly good. It's just good enough. You well, know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah. I, I, I hold a Scanners pen. Scanners get it though. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, subjects, it's closer though, to what it is. And I think picking the person, I like people, you know, mm. and I like pe- telling stories. So, you know, if I talk with you, we're going to get something good. And like, hopefully, cause like you vibe, I try to match your vibe, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, but kind of going back. Yeah. So I was always writing, mm-hmm. but before that, before Jenkum, I was trying to get into the industry and um, th- it's a kind of a funny story because I, I was in New York. I didn't have any background in the industry. I don't have I really didn't have a single tie to anyone there. All you and did was skated. All I did was skated. Right. And it was, there was no Instagram. Some, some skaters had Twitter and Facebook was still like an actual, these are my friends, Facebook. Yeah. Right. So you can't just DM someone and ask to interview them. So I started in college, freshman year. I didn't work for the school newspaper, but I just started pretending like I did. So I, then a couple, I like, I emailed, I got a couple emails from people and I emailed them and I was like, Hey, um, I, can I interview for the school paper? And they were wow. like, no, I, I, no, they said, yeah. Like I interviewed Narako and he said, yeah. And it didn't actually come out in the school paper. I apologize, Narako, but <laughs> did uh, it ever come out? No, it was just for me to talk to people in the industry to try to figure out how to get into the industry. Yeah. Did he ever hit you back and be like, hey, where's this, where's this article? I mean, he was, I was just like, it came out in the school paper. Yeah. And <laughs> I didn't send it. He wasn't, didn't like be like, send me a copy for whatever reason. Right. I, basically, I was like, how do I get into skateboarding? And then I was like, well, I need to talk to people who work in skateboarding. So I don't know how I got Chris's email, but maybe it was just on his website. People still had some sure. private stuff. And mm-hmm. I emailed him and I'm like, I'm going to ask and find out how he did it. And I'm going to, under the guise of, I'm going to interview him. Because if I just said, hey, can you help me get in the industry? He's going to be like, fuck no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if right. I interview him, he might be like, oh, yeah, okay. You came cool. at it with an angle. Yeah. 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 And so I did that. And then um, I would go every summer, like during uh, classes, uh, during break, I would go to skate events, like every mm-hmm. skate event for like summers, you know? I'd go on NewYorkSkateboarding.com, which is just has a list of events. Yep. I just go... <laughs> Go to all of them and just sometimes my friends would want to come and then sometimes they're like, dude, we don't fucking want to go anymore. Like the same four people we don't know, you know, right. yeah. and I'd go there and I just try to like bro down with people and like understand how you kind of get into this like massive sorority fraternity, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of who, you know, yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. one of the times one guy I was like vibing and we were watching something, we we're watching a premiere of something and I'm just spouting off as like a 19 year old. He's like, dude, you should write something on that. I'm like. Yeah, I'm down. Like, what are you thinking? And he's like, oh, I have this site. It's called Interstate Mag. It's out of Baltimore. It's Mm. a blog, essentially. You know, it had three readers or whatever, 10 readers. (laughs) Not a lot of readers. And he's and he brought out a board and he gave me a board. He's like, yo, if you write this article, write an article on it, I'll give you this board. I'm like, okay, this is like getting flow, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm a flow writer. Flow writer, exactly. So I wrote the article and I'm like, like, I didn't care who saw it, who didn't see it. And I'm just like, let's keep it going. So I wrote for him for two or three years for free. Mm. And he would just send me stuff whenever he wanted to. Okay. And I used that platform then to leverage more interviews. Mm-hmm. So the, maybe the Narocco interview wasn't real. But then after that, I could say, hey, look, my work's here. Let's do it. It's actually you know? published. Yeah. yeah. So once I had that, then I could, I had some, as I said, leverage to, mm-hmm. to get real interviews and... Kind of then I would ask like Chris, like, who do you think? Hey, do you have contact with this person? And then that led to the next person. And then I slowly through the tree, it became like a network. Right. You know? yeah. And I got five or six people. Once you have five or six, you start hitting hitting a wider sphere, you know. And then at this point where you're like, well, I could just do this on my own. I don't need this. Little well, because magazine I, I wasn't here. getting anything out of it anyway. At some point, sure. I'm just writing for free. And the dude was like, you know, married and has kids at that point. And he's like, OK, yeah, okay, this is not working. But before that, he took me to Tampa Pro. And when I went to Tampa Pro, that's when I was like, I want to work in skateboarding. Oh, like I saw okay. that and I'm like, you know, you're 20 and you go to Tampa Pro and you're, you come from New York and then, and you don't see people. There was no, not a lot of media. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this person's next to you. That person, Costin's next oh, to yeah. you. We're all drinking beer. 
and you know I'm underage too. Sure. And then you go to the bar and like you throw up, but it's epic because you threw up on Costin's shoes. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the one place you can go and actually hang out with everyone yeah. in the yeah. street and yeah. not go to like a you know a bigger contest and you have to sit in, in the rafters or yeah. something like yeah. that. It's an experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, an experience. and I saw that, and then I was like, I need to figure out how to really do this and Ooh. do it because that's all I want. I just want. I was like, I'll go to Tampa every year for the rest of my life. Right. I was hyped, and I've been most years since then. Okay. Um, so I went back to the drawing board and I didn't work for that. I didn't do that Mac work. I didn't work, do write anymore for that okay. Mac. And I just worked on working on Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after college was over, I, my mom was living in West, in New York. Mm-hmm. And so I went to live with her and she's like, obviously you have to get a job, or, you know, get a job or move out or figure your life out. So I was like, okay, well, I can't get a real career job because then I won't have time to work on this Jenkum thing. Mm. So I just got the, I did the bar thing because I knew it would give me enough time when I'm not working there to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I right. was like, all right, I'm going to try it for, a, in my head, I'll try it for a year, you okay. know, see if I get any results. The mag? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, sorry, I don't know if I was. Mag, but stuff. it's a website. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. In the beginning yeah, yeah. it was, I always wanted it to be, you know, like anything, a magazine. Sure. But yeah. You don't have money and printers and costs. Oh my God, and, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And at that time, actually, it's funny because print is kind of back in vogue now. Mm-hmm. But at that time, print was going right out of vogue and people were not really sure like what to do. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to sneak in here, go fast, start a website and put content out yeah. you know, pretty quickly Okay. and talk about the stuff that people aren't talking about. Um, because from my point of view, I kind of had an outside in point of view mm-hmm. where you guys being here and Thrasher and Transworld and all the media had an inside out point of view. Yeah. So they're making content for advertisers as like almost like a marketing department. Gotcha. And like, I'm looking at it like, Oh, I don't, I'm just looking at it as make good content. There's no advertisers. There's no marketing. There's no, who cares about product? Yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. And I don't care about like stories about product are relatively boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The shoe has got a different stripe. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, sure. yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make fun stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those other people had so much more to worry about. I could just focus on that for the first, you know, um, so many years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that was kind of pivotal in the beginning. And that's why. People weren't reaching out like Jeremy Rogers had just started rapping at that point. Mm -hmm. And all me and my college buddies did was clown his rapping because it was goofy as hell, you know? And we're like, why would you quit? Yeah. yeah. How far into Jankum did you do the Jeremy Rogers? Because the Jeremy Rogers interview put you in a whole other level. Yeah, uh, it did. But it was very quick. I launched the site like February 11th and we did the interview, the Jeremy Rogers interview like March 13th. Seriously? That quick? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. As I said, I think he was one of the few guys on Twitter Mm -hmm. and I tweeted at him and he tweeted me his email and I was like, oh, it's on. I got to get this guy. (laughs) Like, I know someone's going to pay attention if I get this guy. Yeah. Right. And um, people did. Yeah. And I, and so I launched the site February 11th and it was crickets. You know, it's like, who fucking cares? A couple, no, couple no, hits here and there. No, not yeah. even like four. It's all like, oh, wow. like, if we're, it's, if it's on the If it's online and it's just, you bought the domain, I mean, no one's, nothing. You don't get yeah, No one's going to know about it until yeah. you tell people about it. Yeah. yeah. And it's four people. And, and I didn't want to tell too many people about it because I was a little embarrassed too. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't want to tell your mom like, oh yeah, I have a great plan. You know, I'm going to launch this skateboard website. <laughs> I'm going to work at this bar. You know, she would have just been like, dude, can you know, figure it out. You know, what's funny is I relate with that because yeah. it took me a, a while into the nine club to even yeah. say the name, the nine club. Remember yeah. Raj? Yeah, I, 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 I had a hard time yeah. saying, oh, in the nine club, the nine club. Cause it was just, I was a little embarrassed. Yeah. You know, you start these new things. You don't know where it's going to go. Right. Well, you feel a little naked too. Yeah. And then it's like it's vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is my writing even good? You know, yeah. imposter syndrome, all that stuff. And, and also again, I'm young and I don't feel attached to the industry. And, mm-hmm. and then I'm not like a pro skater. So people are like, well, what do you know? Like, why should we listen to you? You know? Sure. So, um, that dropped. Well, there's a story behind the Jeremy Rogers thing too, but I don't know how in depth we want to go with these stories. Let's go. I don't know. What do you mean? Like what what kind of story? Well, I mean, nothing crazy. He had just quit skating to start rapping. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to fucking bust his balls, obviously, because I'm influenced by, you know, Mad Magazine, Big Brother, OG Vice, like all these like things that did that. And Mm -hmm. that was what I thought was missing from skating as well as kind of like a more worldly kind of a different, a higher end view of it too. Sure. So... I think he gave me his email and he gave me his number and then I was just super nervous and I had to drink like two tall boys just to even get on the phone with him. Before this, I had done maybe four or five interviews in my life. Okay. Jeremy, he's a big name. He was at big that name. point. Yeah. He was yeah. he was up there with like P-Rod, sure. Heyday stuff. Yeah. So I called him and 
and I kind of had my, my questions lined up and I just, I think it was maybe only a 45 minute interview. I still have the audio transcript okay. or the audio yeah. thing. So I'm pretty hyped. I should listen to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should put it out. Amazing. I should. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, so I interviewed him and then that was cool. And I asked him all the things that people didn't have the balls to ask him. And he went in for it. He's just like, yeah, I had sex with thousands of people. Da, da, da. Okay. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Like this is going well. As soon as he's saying that, I'm like, yes. Like I'm like, <laughs> yes. he's an open book. Like this guy's a sicko, you know, <laughs> like not, I, I thought he was just going to be like, I don't really want to talk about sure. that. Yeah. yeah. But he was like, bring it on, yeah. you know? Wow. So as soon as I got that, I'm like, okay, people are maybe not even going to believe this interview had happened. <laughs> and some people later were like, did you make that interview up? And I'm like, no, that's what happened. You know? Wow. Um, and then I did the interview and I needed something to go along with the words because people don't want to just see a bunch of words on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Photo. And well, did he, you ever think about just putting out the audio? No, because... Also, I was nervous, so I didn't want all the uh, 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 oh, in right. there, yes. you know. Thumbs and eyes. And right. it was like your fifth interview. You don't want to just put that out. Like, True. that's like way above and beyond my thought at that point. Gotcha. Okay. And also, I'm like, less is more, and let's just include the best stuff. Because in a lot of interviews, I warm the people up, too. Mm-hmm. Like, when I came here, we had a little pre-talk. Yeah, we are just hanging out. Yeah, yeah you kind of got to get the connection going a little bit. There's two ways. You can either go super blunt to start, right. which I like, too, because it builds a little bit of, like, electricity and tension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or you can slowly get them more comfortable and then hit them with it. A little bit of foreplay. Sure. Yeah. And so I can do... <laughs> I go either way. Okay. It just depends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Rough and raw. Or yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> and, and I think both can work people react differently yeah and so you kind of have to prod and step back but also this is kind of just about interviewing but sure kind of keep people educated that like hey we're on the same team we're trying to work on an interview together yeah i'm not here to make you look bad right. i'm here to make you look good and create good content you know absolutely yeah. and get your message out so did you get that's, photos okay oh, i was gonna say that's where big brother fucked up mm-hmm. you know they, just, they made some people look bad yeah and it yeah. backfired on them yeah and <laughs> you can do that but it's 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 yeah, you can only last so long. Yeah. And of course, like some people have been like, everyone's really hyper about how they come off and all that. And mm-hmm. I think we all are. You guys yeah. have been more immune to it because you've done this so much. Sure. But um, well, so even when we're not trying to do that, people get like, oh, man, I said that. I'm like, no one cares. That means nothing. Yeah. You know, until someone brings it up on Twitter like 30 years later. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you ever do you find it kind of weird if like you're trying to help them, but they just kind of ruin themselves? Yeah. I mean, I've seen people definitely walk into, walk yeah. themselves into train wrecks. Right. And sometimes I'll just double check. I'll ask them like, Hey man, are we cool with this part? You know, like, yeah. yeah. Most people I show the interview beforehand. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's, amazing. Yeah. Because we try again, it's a lot of print that they don't do that. They, really? Yeah. It's, it's, it depends on the person, but for the most, if you ask, and of course I'm now, I'm fucking myself, <laughs> but dude, I'm here to, I'm here to remain in contact afterwards. Yeah. You know? Sure. Period. Yeah. Have a relationship. So with the Jeremy Rogers, you said that you needed, um, imagery. Yeah. So I needed imagery. So he didn't live anywhere close. I didn't have a photographer in California. I didn't have budget for, for, for like, that's like a whole day's pay, you know, yeah. for me. So I was like, all right, well, um, I'm going to get an illustration of it. And and so I just put on Craigslist looking for illustrators for Witty Skateboard Magazine. Yeah. And I had 50 bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this girl, Lauren, wrote back and she's like, and it was all, the economy wasn't so good. So 50 bucks was maybe like 75 then <laughs> now, but yeah. still 50 bucks. A good illustrator maybe yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, she was like, hey, I'm down. What do you need? I'm like, okay, draw this white kid with tattoos on his face, with a gold chain and girls, uh, you know, around and okay. stuff. Whatever he's saying in his interview, yeah. illustrate that. And I got that back and it wasn't particularly flattering for him. You know, like the girls were not particularly good looking, you know, like she kind of went in like with the satirical thing pretty hard. Sure. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, fuck, do I run this by him before publishing or do I just do it and fucking hope for the best? But, you know, I emailed him before and I okay. did that road. Yeah. And he writes back and he's like, uh, and he basically was kind of like, I'm going to sue you. Or like, I have, I have like this really great lawyer. He's some Hollywood guy, like. You know, wow. this is defamation of character, da da da. And I'm like, okay. So I called him. I this gets a little muddled, but I either called him or we kind of went a lot back and forth. Uh-huh. And somehow I convinced him that it was a joke and it was going to make him look cooler or uh, it was going to be cool. Sure. And he's like, all right. And so we did it, and I got away with that image. And I think having the image with the text was like so much stronger. Right. Because it you drew knew, people you, you in. You knew immediately off the bat, you're like, this is an interview, but what is this? You yeah. know, like. 
it's it's called Jankum. It has this weird illustration, but it's an interview. There's no skate photos, and it's it's text, and it's just talking about ridiculous Howard Stern stuff. Drew people in. Yeah, yeah. and and that's also where I kind of had a big learning. I'm like, your weaknesses are your strengths at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Like yeah. my weakness was that I didn't have a budget and I didn't have a photographer. So I had to find out another way. Mm -hmm. And that became our signature style after that. It's like, let's illustrate everything. Yeah. Right. Let's just keep that going because it's going to look different than Thrasher and Trans World. Totally. So that was like a huge learning. And it, you can put those persons in a situation mm -hmm. that, that you couldn't get yeah, otherwise. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Right. That's true. You yeah. have way more creative control yeah. whether they like it or not. <laughs> but so I would say it's like kind of like find out when you're starting anything, find out what you don't have and then turn that into a positive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for, for sure. Yeah. And that's, I think what a lot of people, especially in the, like recently in the skate industry in Australia and the UK and here, they're doing their own thing. They're making it their own way. And they're yep. like, okay, let's just, these are typically what have been, uh, these have been the doors to get us into skating before, but let's flip it. Let's make it ours. Yeah. You know? We got to stand out in a crowd as well. Right. Yeah. Right. So the Jeremy Rogers interview comes out. It was mm -hmm. a big hit. Yeah, you yeah. got, I mean, the first day you probably got, you know, like 10,000 views. On yeah, it yeah. Or we got it. We so. got it. Which was for, from to go to from four to 10,000. Yeah. yeah. That's it was like a pulse. It was yeah. like a dead corpse. And then boop. now to get that 10,000 <laughs> to get that corpse to stand up. Yeah. How did you even did you just put it online and it just spread virally no, I put it or on, did you I put it out online and did you contact I had no, no, I didn't. Con I think um maybe Jeremy Rogers tweeted it. Maybe. Oh. I'll have to double check. Okay. But that was another plus about interviewing people for content is that if they liked it, they'd be your broadcast. Yeah, of course. You know? yeah. So I was like, okay, even if I have 500 followers, this guy's got 5,000. So if he liked it, boom, I'm in. You yeah, know? sure. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think he tweeted it and then Slap picked it up from there. And then once it got to Slap, like it was like kind of like disseminated to like Skate Daily and like these other Everybody like more fringe up. sites. Right. And then Transworld put it up. And I was like, oh, I'm, somehow I'm on the map now. Wow. You know? That felt really good. I was like, whoa, this is something. And then the next terrible, terrifying thought was like, well, what do I do now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? How and, am I going to? Well, I had nothing prepped after that. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know because I didn't expect anything to take off. So I didn't know. You expected maybe seven views. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. have other content ready. So then I call. I was like t talking to my brother. And he, I'm like, well, what do I do now? He's like, dude, just keep doing it. And I was like. Well, how much, how often a week? He's like, I'll write something. Like everyone was like trying to chip in and help out. He's That's like, rad. I'll write something. I'll hit up like my buddy who I skated with. We'll talk about skating at this spot, you know? Mm -hmm. And he really had my back on that level. And it wasn't, it was just like, let's fill it with something. Because now you have 10,000 people, theoretically. If they check tomorrow, it's going to be something else, yeah. you yeah. know? And if there's not for a month, then you lost it. Right. right. You know? You're on their radar. Yeah, right. And you can see back. the traffic go down. Wednesday was 10. Thursday was 5. Uh, Friday it was like two and then it went to like a thousand and then it was just like 50, 50, 10. Back 20. to four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th those no, it, it, goes, it goes a little higher every time. Okay. And those okay. are probably okay. the people yeah, yeah. like checking back to see if there's anything new there. Yeah. 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 The, the cool thing is after a while you would see it, like you'd have a base pulse of four, but if you did one thing, then the base pulse became eight. Yeah. You know? Sure. And then the base cult becomes 16. Yeah. So you'd always see it go back down, but it was raining a little higher than it was before. When you did, so you said Jeremy was like, he was cool with it putting it out, but yeah. after it came out, did he, did he say anything to you about it afterward? Like what was his, how did he, people responded to him? He seemed happy about it because he was doing selfish skateboards at that point. Mm. And he had a partner named Dan and Dan posted on selfish and, and they were kind of, they wanted to be the spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like they were afraid of doing that. Yeah, Dan like, was like, like check attention. out, yeah, he yeah. was like, check out Jeremy, he's wild, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, cool, let's do it, you know? Amazing. Um, so I think if, when you want to do that, and that's the most exciting, when someone really wants to put themselves out there, mm -hmm. those are the best interviews. I say it on the show all the time. The more honest somebody yeah. is and the more transparent they are, that's the best interview. Yeah. I learned that, I would ask people, all the time. How much did you make? How much yeah, did you yeah. make? And I, it would be a joke. Skaters right. don't like to talk about money right. with other well, people. Well, because there's so well, a lot of people don't. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people don't. It's, it's just, just anyone. Yeah. I, Andrew Reynolds was the first dude that answered, oh, 160,000 from like Tony Hawk's yeah, skate. Yeah. And I was like, I'm like, whoa, this just changed. But he my had whole... answered that before. It was, but for me, yes, I didn't know fine. that. Yeah. This was my question to him. I right. didn't know the answer. Right. So when he answered it, it changed my whole, uh, uh, interview game with them. Right. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can talk to him about anything. anything yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Andrew is one of the best people to interview. He's great. I mean, because he knows how to give you enough, but not like if he doesn't want to go there, he'll find out another way to like satiate you. you yeah, know? of course. He's really good. He's great. I think he's yeah. one of my favorite people to interview. He's, yeah, awesome. yeah, he's yeah. amazing. And like I said, transparent, honest, yeah. just no, answer great. straight up. Yeah. And that's the best interview. We've had people yeah. come in here 
you know, oh, I don't really want to talk about that or this. I'm like, yeah. dude, that's Im that's an important part of your story. Right. Yeah. And you just want to breeze over that? Well, then it like, just becomes fine. PR and PR is not interesting. Right. I get PR emails every day and they, do, they're yeah. not interesting. Sure. <laughs> yeah. sure. I'm sure you guys do too. Yep. Yeah. You guys We're probably get it worse now, yeah. than me. Yeah. 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 So you said you had to figure something else to write. How long was it till you found out the next thing to put up? Maybe a couple months. Really? Maybe two or three months. I hmm. Well, from there, I still, my the second in my head hit. For for me was uh, we hit up Danny no I no I think Danny Gonzalez emailed us after that oh, and he wow. said I really Danny Gonzalez wall ride Danny yeah yeah, yeah one yeah. wheel one or wheel ceiling wheel. ceiling ride yeah, yeah ceiling yeah. Yeah. yeah one wheel um, yeah. he's like dude I saw that interview like my career's kind of passed but there's a lot of stuff people don't know about me I'd be down mm. for you guys to interview me and I was like yeah okay let's do it like I didn't really know much about him to be honest at that point yeah and I looked him up and he was t then telling me about like how I got, you know, he was in this gang and he skated this and then there's all this footage and his name, was, ultimately his ability was amazing, mm -hmm. but his name wasn't that big. Yeah. So we did that and then, you know, people on Slap liked it because it was like this underdog story. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow this interview narrative. And I think that's early successes were interviews for Jenkum. Right. Because we were bringing something different to the table and trying to find people that would actually want to speak as sure. opposed to, uh, you know, Oh, well, they just came out with a shoe. Let's yeah, get an interview exactly, going. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because there was none of that. It was just who's going to be the best interviewer. Right. And there were people that hit me up, and I'm like, yo, my kind of litmus test is like, if you don't really want to talk about these four things, and you don't really want to, I'm not going to interview you. Yes. Because it's going to be a disservice to both of us. Yeah. You're going right. to be boring, and I'm going to look like I'm doing PR for you. And people are going to be like, why didn't you? Why didn't they ask him about that? Right. And I'd yeah. be like, Ooh, da, 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 yeah. And what's yeah. the point? I know. So um, oh, it so took a while. And then, so we did some interviews, and then we had in between there... I also put out like a call for writers on Craigslist. Like Craigslist was Seriously? like Seriously. Yeah. You were doing Craigslist. I was ads. like, hey, do you if you know about skateboarding or humor, hit us up. And I had like one or two writers come through there and I still use one of them to this day. Is that how you met uh, Anthony Papalaro? Oh, the writer guy? No, no. I met him through I think just I don't remember honestly, but New York infrastructure, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's kind of scary though. Craigslist just off a whim. I mean, you got to vet them, you got to see that, kind of see their work. You got to. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, but at the same time, I had nothing. That's true. You know, it's not like I was a big corporation. It was a dude who's working a job, writing stuff on the side, trying to make something happen. Right. So what did I have to lose? Yeah. You know, like if I got four emails, it's better than getting no emails. And if they all sucked, it's still better than no emails. True. Yeah. You know. True. Like, wow. like you, I kind of just took as many shots as possible. Huh. And I, I learned that also later from um, Patrick O'Dell, because I wanted to be, I was like, Patrick O'Dell, his life is amazing. <laughs> he gets to go and just hang, hang out, out with skaters yeah. and document it. And I was like, yo, and I interviewed him. Maybe Every 20, episode is his favorite skater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like 2013. I'm like, how do you do it? Uh, you do all these, 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 and things. And he's like, yeah, but for every episode you see, you don't see the hundred other things that I tried to get. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, no one sees that. So right. I shouldn't be embarrassed by it, yeah. you know? And if someone says like, oh, this guy hit me up, who fucking cares? Right, you know? right, right, right. Because it's worth it if you get the one. Yeah. So I just hit up everyone. <laughs> he just went on. And same thing with advertisers. Yeah. I, like when I was like, at some point we had enough traffic. I think we were averaging whatever, 5,000 views or 10,000 views, which is not enough to monetize. But in my brain, I thought it was. Mm -hmm. You're like, and I, killing I it. hit up all these advertisers. I'm like, I got 5,000 views. And I hit up 40 to 60 advertisers. And I called... In skateboarding. In skateboarding. Yeah. Any, and I didn't have these contacts. So I would call like the Vans... Uh, store called? or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the I, Vans I, store. I would call the yeah. Vans retail store. <laughs> and I'd be like, hey, do you have a contact for marketing at Vans? And sometimes they would give me a contact. And then I'd write that and I have... Info at Vans.com. Yeah, they would give me a generic. Right. But I just, I would barge that way. It's amazing. Yeah. I'd just try contact, like contact at whatevercompany.com. It's yeah. amazing. The, the hustle, you know, yeah, you got to hustle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's been, I don't kind of believe in like overnight success. I'm just like, if you're diligent, you put in the work, over time, it'll pay off. Sure. Yeah. Who is the first person that sponsored you guys? Or uh, not advertised. sponsored, but advertised. Yeah, yeah, advertised. It's pretty, it kind of felt like a, a skate career in that way. Like yeah. it was, sponsored. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> finally got it. It's like, it Lakai was, fucking yeah. hit us up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the first person was... Um, Brick Harbor was like a high snub. Uh, no, yeah. what's it called? Hype Beast. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hype Beast. Yeah, Brick Harbor was owned by Hype Beast. Yeah, no, it wasn't Hype. Was it Hype Beast? It was. I don't know. It, it was out of Boston, but yeah. So whatever. Brick Harbor was a skateboard retail, online skateboarder retailer, mm -hmm. and I had met this dude Chase through, Whitaker. Yeah, Whitaker mm. through. Um, I don't know. Maybe one of the first uh, agendas. Okay. 
and he he liked the Jeremy Rogers interview. That helped like bring out like the the guys who like the more like raw salty sure. stuff, you know. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I like that. That was raw. That was sick. And we like flirted and chatted for a while. Uh-huh. And then at some point, he was like, you know what? Like, if if you're down to put Brick Harbor banners, I'll give you 250 bucks a month. Okay. And like banners at that point were like, uh, you know, on the top Just and bottom t- on the sure. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And banners were more uh, prevalent then, and they were more effective then, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, 250 a month. That's pretty. That's something. You it's know? something. It's yeah. better than nothing. Yeah. And then I was like, whoa! I, then I can pay for these photos and do this other. So stuff. he said he 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 set the price. Uh, Did you go in there? Did you, I think maybe I asked. Maybe I I was like talking to my friends. I'm like, do you think 500 bucks is too much? Like, you know, you're not sure. You how don't to know what. Yeah. yeah, you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think I just kind of pulled it out of thin okay. air. 250 seemed like reasonable. Reasonable, and also I could just keys. I could justify the cost. Yeah. Like, hey, I got to pay this for that, this for that, and people may nobody may even click on this banner. But but he he taught me a valuable lesson in that. He was like, I'll pay you $250, but I need to see a return on the banner. And I didn't know what that meant. ROI. And, and the return mm-hmm. he wanted was he needed to see sales come through the Jenkin banner. Because in on Brick Harbor, you can see where sales came from sure. on yeah. the checkout. Yeah. So if it had like a Jenkin URL and he sold $250 bucks worth of merch, that's a great come up, right? Yeah. Because he spent no money on the ad. The ad yeah. is practically It puts perfect. pressure on yeah. you because you're just putting it on a website and hoping. Right. 100%. So... I was like telling someone that and they were like, but then it means he's getting the ad for free too. If you fulfill this $250 sold through your site, the ad's for free and you should get something for putting it up. Mm -hmm. So I came back to him. I'm like, dude, I get it. You need to recoup your 250, but I'm, I'm displaying this all the time, regardless of people sell. And also they can go buy it later down the road, you know, on their Mm -hmm. phone or whatever. It doesn't mean they're going to buy it, go to Jenkum, then click it and buy it. Yeah. You you, you put it in their brain. Yeah. Right. So. So I was like, dude, I need more like, you know, 350 or something. Like I should have asked for more looking back, but you asked for like a hundred bucks more. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, all right, I'll give you 350. And he did that for like a year, a year and a half, oh, which wow. is awesome. Amazing. And that was like 2012 to 2013 or 14. Okay. Um, and the coolest thing Chase did though was he was like, okay, I'm paying you this and I know it's not a lot, but I will introduce you to people that can you can get real advertisers Great. so he introduced me to kelly bird when he was at lakai mm-hmm. and to jim thebo at deluxe red wow and those are like that was huge that yeah. was like life-changing so brick harbor lakai yeah. deluxe yeah um, First i think deluxe and then lakai okay because lakai was especially huge then too you yeah know? and i was like oh i don't i don't have that yet let's start with deluxe you know it's it's the board brand is smaller now when you yeah. have three advertisers yeah. on your site yeah. are you how how are you managing that with with uh, the banners? You just use backend. Like I had, I just learned. Uh, I kind of taught myself to do it, but then I had a friend help who had done it for like a snowboard site. So every time somebody clicks on, they'll see a different banner. Yeah, like you, can, you rotate. You can yeah. give okay. each, each one juice. So like, yeah. I would sell. I had to learn how to sell like packages of banners. So it'd be like, I'll give you ten thousand impressions. I'll give you a hundred thousand impressions. I gotcha. You know, a hundred thousand, and if this person has five hundred thousand, you're getting one six of what displays every time. Interesting. So there's a little bit of basic math, but it's not bad. You just have to be able to justify. You got to translate the numbers into what they're getting. Right. So they got to know, hey, am I gonna see the banner every third time or fifth time or every time? It's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. There's more than you would think. Yeah. And and all the terminology I had to learn, like mm-hmm. CPM and like. I didn't even know what, like, you know, people in our industry talk about endemic media, yeah. right? They're like, oh, endemic, this. People wrote me emails with this stuff. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Endemic. So I look it up on Google, Google and then yeah. it gives me just the diff- definition of endemic, but it doesn't really kind of, it doesn't. Put it into context. Put it yeah. into context how that works for skating. Sure. Luckily, I did have a couple of resources. I had some friends who worked at Vice, so I'd ask them about different words. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, endemic. Yeah, I'm like, endemic, well, how do I respond to this? Right, right, <laughs> Am right, I endemic? Right, right, yes right. or no? <laughs> Check the box. So that was, uh, so the first advertisers, three advertisers, and but at this- that, that was an instant. That was three advertisers over four, like the first four years. Right. You know, it's not sure. like it happened- overnight and and you want to yeah. build your worth as well mm-hmm, you know yeah. you can't just go to people like hey i have you know like you said five thousand views which is nothing right mm-hmm. you gotta really and we're just pretty much doing this out of your apartment the entire get, time get go well again. my mom's house yeah i was living uh, at home for the first two years okay i was living at home and obviously like no super, overhead super like kind of bums because everyone was like the success is you get a job you get out of college and you get a job and everyone's like flexing like hey i work for whatever now and they live in the city, yeah. And you're like at home, thirty, you know, thirty minutes away. Kind of, you feel like a loser. And I guess I was a loser, you know. <laughs> but like, I was working on this thing and kind of secretly. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Because I didn't. Uh, 
yeah, like you said, you don't want to like, I didn't want to just put it out there. I don't think I had the balls to do that. Hmm. yet. You know, interesting. And my parents, my mom kind of knew about it, but I don't think she really knew about it till actually checks started coming in and gave me the confidence to be like, oh, this is a project I'm working on. Right. Yeah. Like this 250 is for me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. How long You're, did you take you get out of your parents' house? The first two, two, three years. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then I, so basically I saved up enough money where I knew, okay, I can move out now and uh, survive for like six months. I like mm. made a, oh, sorry. I did like six months of savings. Gotcha. So I know, okay, I'm going to try it now. I know I have enough overhead to pay for that amount. And I subletted like a, a bedroom in like a five bedroom for 700 bucks a oh, month. Wow. Okay. So I knew I had that amount. Yeah. And I just worked from like, once I got there and moved in, I worked from like coffee shops and then I found a co-working space. Oh, seriously? And then I, yeah. And then I put out a call for like interns and stuff. On Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe not Craigslist. On Jenkum now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> on Jenkum. You're using your own website We're now. plugging Craigslist too much. They don't deserve <laughs> that much credit. Yeah, we'll bleep it. We'll yeah, bleep yeah. it. <laughs> No, but um, that's amazing. So, yeah. and you always had your mom's house maybe to fall back on, but it's also yeah. good to get out there well, and put a fire under your ass. You know, it's like, hey, I'm out on my own. I got to do this. Yeah. I did. I mean, it wasn't really an option after some point because right. of changing things. But the first, I was just lucky that those two years at that time, mm -hmm. it was an option. And I think a lot of people that are like success stories or like self-made or whatever, a lot of people brush by details like that. And I find out about them later and I'm kind of disappointed because- the perceived success isn't really realistic a lot of the times. Yeah. Sure. You know, it's like, oh, I did this. It's easy to talk big. Like, I did this, and I took 10 grand, put it in this, and it went overnight. It's like, yeah, but you also started with a college education. You started, you had somewhere to stay. You had a roof over your head. You didn't start in debt. And like a lot of, or you had a rich uncle. I'm finding like a lot of businesses that I looked up to, I'm like, oh, they're kind of like, they. a lot of them don't really survive off their own loot. Yeah. They have someone else helping. Kind of won the lottery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit. And I've... From doing it myself and it, everything is my own funding, there was no help at all. Right. That's how we I, started. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I'm very proud of that. And sometimes I feel a little betrayed when I find out companies are like, not always like that. You right. Know? Like, oh, yeah, he kind of started with this, you know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, well, pff, okay. Or you yeah. could have even built a team around you early on and not even learn how to build a website right, right, or do any of this. Like, right. you went through the trenches, right. which... It's it's kind of more valuable than money in a sense yeah, of like just learning how to how to build something. You yeah, know? it was it was it taught me everything. Everything, dude. It was it yeah. was cool, you know. And then you can go and teach other people. Yeah, how to do it. Right. How and to take over. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I don't know about that, but no, yeah. not take you know what yeah, I meant yeah. like you know, updating the website or yeah, doing yeah. this, oh, that, like, yeah. stuff like that. I felt like you needed to have a little bit of knowledge for each thing you were like sourcing out because then how do you know if they're doing it right or exactly. wrong or better or worse? Yeah. Exactly. You know, like. So I know how to, I'm like kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Like I know a little bit about everything so I can, at least I can differentiate between good and bad Yeah. or right and wrong. Oh, yeah. me and you both. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the website. Yeah. I'm doing, I like I, every time I'll come over here and be like, yeah. Raj, look what I did. Right. And Roger's like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Bro? Go I'm check like, the website. Yeah. Go check the website. But at some like, point it's a hindrance too. And that's where you have, yeah. or you and I, or whoever has to pick. At what point is it damaging more than it's moving you forward? Exactly. And when you get out of the way, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to let it go at, yeah. at some point in and time. And shit's not going to be perfect. And no. it's not going to be how you want it. You're just going to roll with it. Yeah, for sure. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough to let go. Yeah. Especially if you've been doing it yourself. And yeah. you know, sometimes you think to yourself, ah, it's just easier if I do it. It is, but... It's how I operate. Yeah. But uh, if, you're not, if you're doing that, then what are you missing out on doing? A lot. Doing? A lot. And it's the same thing yeah. with any job. It's like people always think like, I'm doing this and this is great. But what's the other opportunity that you're missing out on? And mm -hmm. if there is none, then great. But yeah. if there's something else that you're kind of putting, like a lot of people, there's like a productivity thing, super dorky. But a lot of people are like, yo, I'm going to be busy. I'm going to wake up and check email and do all my emails. And it's right. like, that's great. But what did all those emails get you? Mostly nothing. It's like a lot of like just back and forth pa pushing paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I would do a lot is like, in the mornings, I'd write a list of things I got to do and then prioritize the list one to 10 hmm. and then just do one immediately okay. upon waking before like my brain could kick myself into like not wanting to do it. Yeah. Like, oh kind of like going to the dentist, like, like, yeah. I'm just like, I got to do this and like, I'm not going to get emotional about it yet. Yeah. You know? And I would do that and I was like super anal attentive. So I'd write the time I started that task and then I'd write the end task. So I'd have every day planned out from when I started to end. Because it's really easy to get like uh, lost in like Facebook and stuff. Oh, oh my yeah. god! You know, like you go on Facebook at three and it's six p.m. and you're like, back then when it was actually fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you'd go and like, where the fuck did the time yeah, go? Yeah, so yeah, if I went on Facebook, I'd write Facebook three fifteen. 
And then I don't. You were that detailed, seriously. And then and then when I would be on Facebook after a while, I'd be like. Oh, I started at 3.15? Fuck, it's 3.45. Like, I don't... What am I doing? You just and then, I, fucking, and yeah. then I close the bracket, and then I'd be like, okay, what do I got to do next? Write it down, start the time. Huh. And then you could see also how long stuff really took. Because people, you think it takes that long, but you could, if you're focused, you can plow through a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know? I've timed myself, too. Yeah. I've timed myself editing. Yeah. I've timed myself doing stuff. It's totally, like, retentive. It's so funny. Know. I'm just remembering the time you tried to, like count how many times it took you to do a manual oh I, you know the, yeah, the, 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 golf you know the club counter. counters at the yeah, yeah, you know yeah. the club yeah, yeah. They had one two three four five yeah. five hundred people came in tried using that when i was filming a manual trick i think after like 500 i fucking threw on the broke the shit yeah, like, yeah i couldn't even his board. focus his board it was horrible <laughs> that's a horrible but what was the idea? horrible <laughs> what was the initial idea to do that you want to see how long it take want to see how long it took me to check that's Nobody what, actually knows. Oh yeah, that took me right, four hours. Right. Well, if you how many tries if you get in that time? Period. I broke the counter, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you have digital cameras now, like even on your iPhone. So I'll go look and look at the clips every time. Sure, and I'll be like, dude, that was 120 tries. Yes. Yeah, but in your brain, you don't even know what's going on. Right. A lot of the times, yeah. I mean, you've, they'd have to go and delete clips. Yeah, you know, so yeah, everything. Yeah, you kind of get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go through yeah. a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, just 100%. learning learning the business as you go. Yeah. You know, 100%. we probably like you, we had no, we have nobody to, you know, we had nobody to turn to yeah. and be like, Hey, how did you guys do this? How right. did you guys do that? Right. Yeah, you can't like, call trans world or thrasher. We're, we're right. just kind of in our own world over mm-hmm. here, you know? And I can imagine maybe the same for you. Mm-hmm. Who are you calling? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there was nothing. There was, tra- there was thrasher. There was trans world. Tra- everyone was like, thrasher wasn't big back then too. This was like 2009. It mm-hmm. wasn't big on the web and it wasn't, even the mag was like way skinnier. Like mm. it was way skinnier and Transworld like maybe was bigger. I don't know, but yeah, they, they like, were both in their kind of like own bubble in California and unapproachable to me, mm-hmm. you know, someone. And so when you're doing a magazine if out of New York that's trying to be bigger than New York, there's of course local mags in Florida and all over the world, but I didn't want to just do a local stuff, you know, right? because it, it gets capped. So I'm like, I want to be bigger than that. And how do I do that? I don't know. So I'd look at... Um, other sorts of content and how it resonated across the web and also mm-hmm. other types of magazine. I'd have old vices and stuff and I'd be like, oh, I like that, but let me try it for skateboarding. Yeah. You know, yes. let's make it more skate focused. Right, yeah. right, right. So I, I kind of had these models that I would emulate a little mm. bit because I knew that they worked to some degree. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, I, I'm spending hours writing something that's going to suck, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so it happens, right? Right. And yeah. you you have to do that work. Sure. You know, it's like you guys coming here every Monday, it's like going to the fucking gym, you know? Oh yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. He actually knows what the gym's like. Yeah. But <laughs> like, you guys this is the gym. I never leave the house. Yeah. I'm always yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know what gym uh, but, means. but it's no, yeah, but it's cool because you get good at it. You're banging away and like you don't realize you're getting better, but a hundred episodes in, yeah. you're oh, getting better. I mean, Roger lazier, and but... I don't even have to talk. Yeah. I know what he's doing, he knows what yeah, I'm doing. He's nodding the, out. The I shared know. the shared drives and everything. We we have a system. The, the yeah. system got built as we went, yeah. you know, and now it's just like, cool. I did that. He did that. Yeah. I, we, we, without even talking, we know what's going on. Right. You know, Jankum, how'd they even, how'd that name even come? It's a, it's quite an interesting drug. <laughs> oh, it's a great yeah. one. Yeah. Great. A- Highly recommended. <laughs> Some people even call it the shit. It's really good. The shit. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 so it's the a shit. corny joke, but you gotta yeah, go yeah. there. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is tell us no, what Jankum so means. We had a we had a skate crew in college mm-hmm. and crew, whatever, friends house. Sure. And um we all lived together and it was a, a total shithole, like any skate house. And we'd invite people over to our parties. And at that time Jankum was this mythical fake drug that someone somewhere on the internet made up and oh comprised of taking shit and a piss in a bottle, putting it in the sun and letting it kind of fumigate, and then huffing, yeah, Yeah. ferment, and then (laughs) huffing the fumes. And they said it was the best high in the world. And I was like, well, it should be all that work. I know, wow. (laughs) So obviously Jenkum doesn't smell great, so we're like, yeah, our house is the Jenkum Palace. Like, that's what we do here. We make Jenkum. Yes, it just started off as a a joke. Just to freak people out, you know, and they were already like, well, your house sucks. So there's like (laughs) holes all over their wall from like, skating in it and just like mm. wrestling and then okay. we had like a dance floor room which was just the living room with no furniture you know <laughs> wow. that was classic so you what, just don't move in what part of new york were you in? it was uh, about hour and a half north it's called new paltz new york oh okay um and so that was the party house and then it, i mean stuff just, is just natural from there you're yeah. just like well I'm, I'm, i wanted to start a mag and i'm like 
everyone else liked talking about it and doing it, but everyone likes talking about it and doing it when you're sitting on the couch smoking weed. Of course. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, no, I'm going to buy the domain right now. Like, how do I do that? Like, I'm going to go on GoDaddy or something yeah, yeah, yeah. and buy this fucking domain. Sure. Jenkum. And then I tried to buy Jenkum.com and it's owned by like some like Chinese hackers or something. <laughs> so I was like, all right, we'll call it a mag. Fuck it. Let's do that. You know? Oh, uh, so you got JenkumMag.com. I got JenkumMag.com. Mm. And, um, which I'm not still, th I would really love to have Jenkum.com. Now, have you tried recently to I get have, it? I have, but I still go and it's fucking Chinese How do you, stuff. you could yeah. buy it, it can, no? Can no, you, but it's like a big, a, it's like a big manufacturing company. Oh, It's like Jenkum. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and it's like a capital K in the middle and it's like, they're like a huge campus in China. Do you have an alert wow. on it? Uh, I don't, but I can You can put one. an alert on it. Okay. Yeah. Just in case it's. Yeah. Yeah. Goes. I mean, it's, I've waited 10 years. Mine's waited another I wonder, 10. Yeah. Do they know what uh, their word no, or their name I know, means? No, I definitely know. Yeah. It's actually called Jenkum what Technologies. Do they yeah. What they do they manufacture? They added the technologies onto uh. it. Yeah. So wow. legend. That's amazing. Yeah. So. The shit technology. Actually, yeah. I see. This is what I need to do. I need to go there and interview them about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, hey, I'm Jenkum the magazine. You're Jenkum the technology. It's like, what are you really up to? And then mm -hmm. kind of go for it. Yeah. 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 See? See what happens when you come here? Content, great yeah. content. Yeah. This is why I came for that one article. Yeah. It's all paying back. So yeah, I mean, yeah, the, that's amazing, Jank. I'm just transferred over. It transferred over, and of course, like it's a poo poo pee pee joke, which is yeah. great when you're younger because it was funny and weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. But also, what I liked about it, <laughs> this fucking guy's poo -poo laughing. Pee -pee. Legend. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh. What I liked about it was that real newspapers like Fox News and these places were pr pretending or reporting on it like it was a real drug, and I just thought, well, how how much poor research you have to do to actually report on this like it's taking America. And it was just like, it was amazing that they gave it that much credibility. So I just, I thought it was like kind of satirical and fun yeah, and poking fun at right. the system overall. Okay. Um, you know, now I've heard it so much that that definition of it is so removed from my head. Yeah, yeah of course. I just think of Jenkum as this. It's yeah, important thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, and it, it also was good for Google, too, because if you call, this is what people actually make a lot of. They call their fucking magazine or whatever company, like, Swift Skate, whatever. And it's like, okay, you're going to Google Swift Skate, and you're going to come out with, you're going to be buried by all these, like, weird, any search that has Swift in it, you know? Yeah. True. And Jenkum only had, like, a couple of searches, which were, like, <laughs> the shit ones. Right. <laughs> and so, so immediately, we, we went ahead of the shit ones because we were, like, active and doing stuff and all that. Right. Yeah. So there's something, I think names are very important. They, oh, yeah. Totally. Definitely. And, and everything from pro skaters' names to company names. Like, yep. I, like, one of my theories is that names, like, a good name can like hinder a whole career oh yeah i mean sorry a bad name can hinder a whole career well we always talk about like nicknames like that guy yeah. needs a nickname yeah 100%. they had a nickname Ooh, yeah sky's the limit it would change because your name is your brand yes. you know mm -hmm. and it's like you, there's the board company you know let's say it's habitat and sure. then it's your name anthony scalamari would be nothing well ragdoll <laughs> yeah oh yeah i actually think yeah no i actually Scalamari's like that name though with Scalamari? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good, too. It kind of yeah. sounds yeah. spicy, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. That, but he built too. his career ragdoll. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's it fair. works. It yeah. works. Yeah. So, yeah, names definitely matter. Yeah. Was was Deerdeck ever pissed you guys took his uh, no, nightclub name? No, never. That was from Felix. Felix uh, Arguelles coined the term oh, okay. while he was uh, announcing. He would be like, oh, the Nine Club, he made it in the Nine. And then they uh, turned that into a thing, and yeah, we yeah. were like. That sounds like a fucking show. Sounds like yeah. a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought you guys were funded by them for the longest time. A lot of, you know what? We <laughs> yeah. people have uh, hit us up about that. Like yeah. I didn't want to watch the Nine Club because I thought it was a Street League thing. Yeah, and yeah. then I, I finally so watched too. it and I was like, oh, this is nothing to do with Street League. Yeah. But our after we, you know, had the the name and everything, we were like, oh, well, you know what? It could actually help us grow because right. in the search, little kids are searching. Or right. So you thought kids, about similar things. Yeah, people yeah. are searching for Nine Club. Yeah, yeah. We would pop up. Yeah. We're getting, you know, Google, the more you're linked to different websites, yeah, yeah. The, the higher you rank in the, so we're like, okay, well, we're getting linked by Trans World and Thrasher right. and all these companies. We're going to grow higher yeah, in the yeah. ranking. So as yeah. soon as somebody types in Nine Club, boom, there we are. Yeah. Dude, every, every contest where I'm at the street leagues, Nine Club happens. I'm just like, dude, perfect advertising yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, I mean, they use the number <laughs> yeah. and I use, I, yeah. we use the, the, the letters. Yeah, no, but it works. It we works. we yeah. instantly went and trademarked it and everything. You know, you got to really? cover your ass. Yeah. It's true. Damn, real deal. What about, uh, let's talk more about Jankum. Let's talk about it. Controversial stuff. Yeah, you yeah. guys, you know, poke fun at things, yeah. everything. Is there, has there ever been a time where you shed light on things too? Shed light on things as well. You know, yeah, we always say we try to shed light on the shadier aspects of skateboarding. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's, uh, sure. That was like the initial, like, let's talk about the things everyone else is not talking about. Right. You know? Yeah. And I think that, that kind of led into how media is, you know, 
we set a lot of groundwork for how some things became now. Yeah, right. It made people a lot more open. Yeah, now, I think so. Is there is there a line that you draw? Or is it kind of a... Uh, I mean, you kind of have to in a sense, right? It, it's... It can be tricky to navigate this this industry. Right. We're, we're a small industry, right. you know. Uh, skateboarding is very small. Yeah, you know, it, from the outside it may look huge. And you don't want to burn any bridges. It, it, I think it, it could be inside, tough. It's a small. Uh, from the inside, it looks big. From the outside, it's tiny. No, what, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? By, what you, the world looks at us, they're like, this. That's the smallest thing in the world. No, no they think it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's a big. Yeah, they think girl is like a fucking complex or like whatever <laughs> nine club. Yeah, that's oh, like I'm talking about don't skate. No, no, no. no, no. From skaters oh, in general. The, in, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Never mind. I mean, yeah. people think Jenkins a huge company, you know, and they're like they get frustrated when it's like, why didn't you get back to that one email? Why right. didn't you do that one thing? And like, why isn't shipping exactly like how I get it on Amazon? It's exactly. Like, Cause we're right. not Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. great. You know? So is there a line that you draw in the sand or um, is it, um, do you it's, tread it's, lightly sometimes? Of or, course. Yeah. yeah. People, I think in the beginning, people thought we were like this heartless, like go after everyone and like, em. we're out to get you and yeah. like ruin people's careers. And that was never, ever my intent. Okay. Right. Um, for me, I, I, I kind of mentioned this before, but like, mm-hmm. I, w- I want to work with you to get the story out. And if that's your intent, I will work with you as long as it's not crazy bad for me or you or super harmful. Like, I'm, what's the point in going out and ruining people's careers, you know, yeah. or ruining something like we're all we're all kind of trying to make a living in this together to some sure. degree, you right. know, and even the people who want to pretend like they're the outsiders or the bad guys, they're still working in there, too. And we know that because we work in it and you see them at an event and, you know, it's kind of like a. Uh, in wrestling, kayfabe, I think it's called. Kayfabe. That's like uh, heels versus good guys, good guys versus bad oh, guys. Okay. There's some sort of kind of like um, skateboarding kind of has this dialogue where it's like, oh, you're with those guys and I'm with these guys mm-hmm. and this is my gang. But sure. then you see people outside of the media and they're like, oh, Sean Maltel's friends with this guy and that guy hangs with that guy. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of a, we make this fantasy world too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm kind of going off track, but no, part of good. Jenkin was to kind of... Um, show show that world and mm-hmm. and really get to the bottom of things and have have our ecosystem be more open and interesting and honest mm-hmm. and honesty obviously is something that not everyone takes lightly because we have a, a whole industry of making up things making up heroes making up stories making up fables you know mm-hmm. and so some people might think in the video it went down this way but then you talk to the filmer and it went down this way well you know there right. that can be damaging Yes. But it's the truth and it's the back end story that I find more interesting. Yeah, skaters sometimes yeah. have a shell, you know, and yeah, it's, yeah. It, they, they want to be portrayed a certain right. way. You right. know, it's a, it, we're, we're kind of living in the age now where, okay, you kind of got to put yourself out there now. Right. Skating is, is great, yeah. but it's also people want more. People want personality. They want, right. they want more than just skate tricks now. You know, yeah. let's learn about somebody. Let's do, you know, the, yeah. It's, I don't know. I think it's a different landscape. It has. You know? And I mean, obviously when I started, it was different and now it's different. And e- even in between, it was, I kind of look at skateboarding now as like, um, a little bit like, the, um, there was never a war, but it's like, things have settled. The dust has settled. Uh-huh. When I started Jenkum, it was the huge changing of the guard and FA was a new company and all these people are quitting their old companies. And yep. I was just very lucky to be there at that right time. Like every week in like 2000, 13, 14, and 15, there was someone leaving a company. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And it was yeah. like, oh, Gino's leaving what? And like, this person's doing that? And I was like, okay, call him now. Let's get it. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like five seconds later, let's get it before someone else. And I think that set us up. Well, because there, there, there were shakeups in the industry. There was total shakeups. And now we're seeing in 2019, 2020, though, this is like what happened from the shakeups. Yeah. And these are the new brands from that. You mm-hmm. have your Frogs, your 917s. Yep. You have all these new, your passports mm-hmm. and the older brands, a uh, handful of them are there, but it's different. Their power, the power has been like restructured. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's almost like the playing fields even now. Yeah. You know, yeah. the playing so fields even, and that's also part to the technology. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. when we're making content or when I'm watching content, I'm always thinking, okay, it's, you're competing globally now, right? Where yep. back in the day you had two options or five options. How is your thing going to be different or better than everyone else in the world? And not even just podcasts or shows. How's it going to be better than shopping on Amazon, Pornhub, Instagram, anything else? Because those things are all click away too. That's true. So if you're not getting engaged or it's not interesting or not creating real like value, then mm-hmm. what's the point? It's very interesting. Is there anything that's come back and bit you in the ass? Um, Any piece you did that you thought was good and you just, it, it, it kind of blew up in your there's face. There's times when we've interviewed people and done it like in a joking way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're on board and sometimes they weren't. 
and um yeah they weren't a couple not many not as many as you'd expect but i can think of like three or four instances Mm. where just those people were like oh well i didn't want to like it's not a joke to me and it's not of course it's not it's your career it's your life and also you're in print con uh context is hard sometimes in print it is and and there's pluses and minuses that too sometimes Mm -hmm. the ambiguity is like a positive because people read it in their own voice and how they want to hear it you know i love that like when i would read like an old narocco interview it kind of is like half fantasy you know, like he interviews Big Pun and old Big Brother. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking, I'm playing this in my head, like, okay, here's Big Pun, he's 330 pounds. <laughs> right. He's like Narako, he's like, at that time, he's either super fat or super skinny. <laughs> yeah. glasses. Sure. And and the way that it's framed, you kind of play their voices in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something about knowing less, which is like a little bit removed from today, and mm-hmm. it's special to me. Yeah. So I think text sometimes... You know, you people have to read, but it has a special quality in that you're using your imagination. That's true. And video is there. You see it. You right. know what it is. You can't make it up. This yeah. is that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I said print, but I meant text. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't text. matter. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know. That's my shtick about print, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When was the, the time where you just, you know, the Jeremy Rogers thing, yeah, 10, yeah. That, that was early on. Yeah. And then it, was there a point in time where um, you actually made a living and everything started fucking just falling into place. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people ask, um, you know, turning point type questions. Like, can you pinpoint it? It was, I've been doing it full time for since 20, early 2015. 2015. So, or 20, end of 2014. So, you know, uh, four years. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five years. Four four or five years. And and we've had, you know, I have a small group of dudes too. I have like Mm -hmm. Nick, Alexis, uh, Christian, and they all help. And some are part-time, uh, Alexis is full-time and we have Raspa, the filmer and all Mm -hmm. these other dudes. And it's a pretty big gang now for what, how we operate in the space Mm -hmm. and for media in general. Uh, and I think the turning point was probably the first three advertisers, probably when we got a shoe advertiser, Mm -hmm. like when you, when you start adding up, those three advertisers and then the shoe, it was like, okay, even if it was two or three grand a month and you did hide side hustles, it's kind of enough for full time, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think, Lakai, it might have been whatever. It was either Converse or Adidas, mm-hmm. one of the two. Okay. I think it was Converse, yeah. though. Well, let me ask you this. You you were saying it before, you know, that you the clickable ads, mm-hmm. the banners, mm-hmm. right? And back then, maybe it was a more efficient way of advertising and right. now... Are you, is there a drop in there? Do you have to like reinvent like yeah. how you're advertising it's, it's changed. and how media's changed? And that was kind of the fun part yeah, too. No one really clicks on the banner ads anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's like pre, pre rolls in videos. You yeah. go to the thread, you got to watch the pre roll. It's like how many too. people click on that? Like, yeah. what, what, what's going but, on? So that's so that's changed from just like media in general, like sure. not just skateboarding. Yeah. That's and the cool thing was like I remember um, I went on a trip and it was like a media trip, like. You know, they sometimes you go on a trip and they bring one photographer from Transworld, Thrasher, Jenkins, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. And someone from another company, uh, media company, was like, So, what are you guys doing about this trip? And I'm like, I don't know, nothing. Like, I didn't even know really why I was there yet. Yeah. And he's like, Nothing. And because this company had just invited us to check out the skate park and the new shoe. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Yeah, what am I going to write about this shoe? And like, you were skating it. We're not great skaters. Like, we're just normal dudes talking about it Uh and he's like oh yeah and he's like well people are watching what you're doing because you're kind of leading the way of like redefining whatever is expected sure because for so you're whatever you're doing is working to you're trying to figure it all out and i'm trying (laughs) and i go go, i'm doing nothing and so i did nothing and i think it shot me in the foot later down oh yeah it might have i mean i think they were just like hey we spent that money to like bring you out there like and you didn't do shit you didn't do shit and i was like oh i didn't know it was supposed to like you didn't ask me yeah but it was kind of like they brought me on kind of pushing me that direction Mm -hmm. but i didn't understand you would i didn't understand the hope and the push is like you still got to give them flowers you know yeah (laughs) sure (laughs) sure like it doesn't it's not they bought you dinner they want something to return you gotta give them a little kiss at the end of the night exactly right so um, oh interesting (laughs) So you just got to kind of navigate and just every, you just, oh yeah. So t- going twists back to and question, turns. Is, yeah, yeah. So everyone was making things up, but, um, banner ads also were never like, we need clicks. It's not about clicks. It's about associations with the companies and getting, you know, that's if someone's going and seeting it repetitively, get in their it makes it out there. Yes. Coca-Cola. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I'm thirsty. Um, I'm going to go get a Coke. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, but I think a lot of skate companies, 
And I could be totally wrong, but I think yeah. a lot of skate companies don't realize that. They want the ROI. They want the right. clicks on their website. They want, But you have other companies in the real world, Casper Mattresses, yeah. they built their business yeah, yeah. on just podcasts and word right. of mouth and right. just having it ingrained in people's heads. I need a bed. Oh, Casper Mattress. Right. Yeah. But they had the benefit of budgets to explore that. This is true. Yeah. And that's this the problem true. with the skate brands is they're like, I get it. Okay, you got a thousand bucks for marketing. So you need to see it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise you're not doing that again. But see, they need to be patient. Yeah. I agree too. They yeah. need to be, yeah. It, it's ingraining it in people's heads. Yeah. Yeah. Just one time isn't yeah. going to do much. No, it's right? not. And that's, that was We a did a read thing. for a skate brand. Yeah. And they really didn't see anything and happen. What do you mean by a read? Just so, podcast. just so other people. Like a podcast read. Like, yeah. yeah. Podcast like a, us talking about it. And like, oh, we didn't see anything in return. Like, yeah. Give it time. Yeah, it's like yeah, we did totally. one, like, right. you know, and it happens all the time. And it, I mean, I'm sure yeah. with you, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, skate companies are, it's a different breed, mm -hmm. right? When you're trying to deal with uh, advertising in the landscape right, we're in right now. Yeah. I don't I, know. Some, some people were super support. Like people have to understand it's a long game. Yeah. And a lot of people did like Jim, Jim is super forward thinking, you know, mm -hmm. Jim Thibault. Yeah. Right. Um, Deluxe. And he was like, hey, I get it. Like, we got your back. He's always like, like, what can I do to help? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. always, what can I do to help? But yeah. also, it's not, the banners are kind of the icing on the cake, right? That's kind of just to show that we support each other. Yeah. Yep, yep. But then it's like, okay, now we're going to, we can funnel content through you when it makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. We can work on something when it makes sense. It's kind of like the starting bridge. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of that stuff then became like, hey, we're doing a shoe next month with so-and-so. Like, what can you do? And I'd be like, hey, we can do these 10 things. And they'd be like, okay, well let's throw you some more budget and let's do that. And yes. then it grows that way. And then if you do a good job on the video, then they're like, well, let's do that every time a new shoe comes out. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're part of their team to get the word yeah. out. And all of a sudden know? you're part of their schedule. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's like, it was doing a good job after. The banners were kind of like just to start. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and are like you, you guys too, like now are you our guests? Um, like for instance, you had like what three or four toy machine guests? Mm -hmm. I yeah. assume like someone chipped in for that, or we did a Volcom thing. Oh, okay, so okay. Volcom, and then they just r happened to write for Toy Machine. The Toy Machine video was coming out, so right. it, it everything worked, worked out perfectly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You but know? it wasn't just by chance. It was like, hey, we had a brand that kind of helped foster right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and, it, right. And, it's, and it's something that hey, we're gonna have these guys on the show anyway. Yeah. Right, you know, so yeah. it might as well work together. Well, that's what's funny about this stuff too, because at some point you want to have them because it's current, mm -hmm. and then the other point, if the brand's down to work with you on it even better, right, but the the messaging can get blurred so some people you'll never in a lot of stuff like on a threat let's say i open a thrasher back in the day right mm -hmm. and there'd be um a plan b ad and then there'd be a sheckler interview yeah. right yeah. you didn't really know is that just because the plan b video just came out and sheckler's super current or did plan b give him a bunch of money and say you got to interview him because we have a video it's a plan like it's like chicken or the egg kind of thing yeah. that's right it's how a lot yeah. of covers i feel like happened too yeah, oh, yeah. a lot yeah. of covers mm -hmm. i think a lot of the barracks got super like in the beginning the barracks was cool because it was like this is the behind the scenes of all these guys right yeah. and then it became like we have segments and you're like that's cool because it's consistent right yeah. yep. and then it became like well these segments have these guys that i don't really care about yeah, that's with someone's marketing plan. and then it became a whole f everything you looked at was just like a you know behind the lens with this person and it's like i don't i know this is for some other company yeah, yeah and i just okay, you start right. tuning it out yeah like mm -hmm. instagram too it's like it's yeah. all marketing now yeah. so you're like yeah it used to be like a fart joke and like, hey, this is my cat. Yeah. And then now it's just like, here's my new part. Nah, yeah. nah, nah. And it's like, oh, fuck you. Gary. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gary Vee would always say marketers ruin everything. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm yeah. like, I don't think anyone goes on Instagram now th these days and enjoys it. Like really, you don't watch go on Instagram like it would be like a TV show. Yeah. You do it because you're just like chained to it. You're like, well, what? I have five minutes. What else am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah. And you know? sometimes you come across something that you really want to see. It's like I just I just did it too with my yeah. skaters and cars just came out, you yeah. know. And I was like, I I enjoyed it. I thought right. it was a good piece, and it right. was I thought it was funny, and I was posting stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm I was literally marketing this video. Yeah. But um, and I don't really do that too much, you know. So f for me to do that was uh. If you're well, you're it, you're it, it, it was easy. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah. always say this about Kelly. You know, mm -hmm. he's posting his, his S shoes and his this and that. But it's what he but, loves. But it, you could tell it's genuine. I'm you know, proud of all it's that. Not that's, that's something very Kelly too. Right. Yeah. Like he almost gets a pass. Yes. Yeah, he's also drinking milk. You well, know? that's what I'm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But Have that's you what I'm drinking yet. Uh, well, I haven't been looking over there. Dude. You're on your own fucking islands. But that's what I'm saying, I don't even though. I feel like I'm here with you. With some people, it's very easy to tell. Oh, 
yeah, whatever. But with yeah. other people, it's like that's their passion, that's right. their shit. You know, right. They love that. They want and to that put can it out there. that can also hurt them too. I've, we all know some skaters where you're like, damn, I like that dude, and now like yeah, sometimes they're right. sometimes he's spamming me with like vegan cheese. I'm like, come on, <laughs> yeah, dude, sure. vegan cheese. Yeah. Right. It was it so is. weird when social media came out because you're like, dude, why are you people that would post about themselves would look like kooks? Yeah. Right. And you're like, why? I'm like, dude, if you're following me, what else do you want to see? Mm-hmm. Like, you yeah. want to see stuff that I that you're wanting to see me do that I'm known for, yeah. right? It's tricky because sometimes I'll see, I'm, I'm such a fan of a celebrity mm-hmm. and then I follow them on Instagram and then I see their stories and I'm like, this celebrity's whack. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I wish I never saw mm-hmm. their true side, you know? It's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. Sometimes it, it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And it's hard to do it and yeah. I mean. I mean, I'm just not the guy to put my shit out there like that. Yeah. I, I just, I don't and care. I think it sucks kind of in the the world we're in now it's like the people that are more humble and quiet unfortunately i think get the short end of the stick yeah and yeah. you'd like to be able to reward that behavior and be like hey we're on the same boat we're all trying our best your stuff's good but we don't have to shove it down someone's throat right you know? right and the people that are like louder and more like i'm special i'm the fucking shit sometimes they they one up other people you know like i just saw socrates the the filmer mm-hmm. you know the dwindle filmer yeah. i'm like he was like, yeah, I've been applying for jobs. You know, he's filmed some of the most prolific skateboarding Unbelievable. stuff. Unbelievable. We had him on the show. Yeah, and he was here. He's Incredible. now working in like a warehouse. Yeah. Like and putting together like parts. And he, and he was like, you know, I don't know about his background resume, whatever, whatever, but he should not have to do something like that. Sure. Like he And he was, I interviewed him for another piece we're working on, and mm-hmm. he's so humble about it. I was like, damn it. If you sold yourself a little more, I think it would help. You right. Know? Where, because I asked him, I was doing a piece to, on the courthouse, mm-hmm. and I was like, so how does it feel to have, you know, done all these tricks there? It's so epic. And he's just like, I don't really think about it. Like, it's chill. I'm like, dude, fucking sell me on it, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you filmed all these tricks there that started uh, one of the most important important skate spots in the world. You That's know? true. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'd like to see... He's a part of history. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes, you know, and, and I like people that are modest, but it, sometimes it, it hurts you. What was it? It's kind of funny when you bring up new stories, but like, you know, how I kind of heard of Wecking Ball was through you guys almost. Mm -hmm. And I kind of saw it on Instagram, but like how you see something on the Internet, you're like, let's go. Let's let's. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the most fun part. Yeah. It's like an adventure. Monster kid. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. If I get one tip off, it's like, how do we get there? Right. right, The only question is, how fast can we get there before someone else gets there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be good. But I'm saying when I know when it hits the nerve and I, I get the feeling, I'm like. I'm just like, where is he? Where are they? You know, like, how do we get there? Can we get a sponsor? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Like well, after after that, I'm like, can we marriage it with a brand that would make it like make sense? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know. I remember what was the you had the Kanye thing happen on there where yeah, it seemed yeah. like you just walked into that. Oh, he, no, skating. Well, oh, the when he ollied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was. Um, we had a tip, so we threw we throw these block parties, and yeah. we did one last year for Art Basel, which is kind of like a all ages, all people like come mm-hmm. skate, no like demo, no mm-hmm. no like street course that only four people can tread. Sure. Yeah. So we threw a party, and uh, it was in this uh, downtown arts district of Miami, and it's like uh, it's in this pretty epic property, and we worked with Andrew Skate Shop on this, mm. and um, we knew one person had to connect to Kanye there. And we kind of had a tip off that he was around and like looking in that area for something, but we didn't really know if anything, you know, you don't think twice about anything, but we're, yeah, we're pouring and we're working on stuff. And of course there comes like our buddy and he's walking in with Kanye and I'm like, we're making nutties because every block party we make like these terrible drinks to give out to people. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're, okay. they're, they're mixed drinks, but you know, they don't taste great, but they get you really lit. They're sure. really fun. <laughs> so... So we're mixing these nutties. Jungle and juice. Yeah, it's jungle yeah, juice. Yeah. We're mixing them in trash cans <laughs> in the venue on the street. Like, okay, here's one part. You know, uh, liquor, here's one. And, and I'm pouring and I'm like, yo, dude, I think that's Kanye. And he, we're like looking at each other. And like how you guys communicate, you don't even have to speak. Right. It's just put down the juice. He runs and, and gets his phone out. <laughs> and I, we're just running up and we're like, yo, you came to the party? He's like, yeah, I heard about it. And I'm not sure if he... He was like 100% or he was freestyling or whatever. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, skateboard stuff. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I never learned how to ollie though. And then immediately it was like, let's get him to ollie. <laughs> so like, you know, he takes the board and and uh, my filmer Alex was like trying to teach him to ollie. And I was, I you know, I was filming. And the funniest part is if you look at that footage, um, we were mixing with um, gloves because the nutties, like, they dye your hands. Like, we're mixing oh, with fruit punch. Right. So your hands become all red after. Mm. So he's teaching Kanye to Ali, and he still has the glove on. So he has, he has a yellow dishwashing oh glove God. on, and he's teaching him to Ali. 
And then Kanye's like, you make it look so easy. And, and then my, uh, Alex is like, it's like your music, man. You just do it. And like getting them all hyped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at that point, there was like three or four people around. It was only the people setting up the party. And, you know, we're a small operation. Sure. It was like three or four of us. So we're setting it up. And I think after 15 minutes, a lot of people were like catching on. I mean, I was seeing people from like roofs and oh, all over the place, wow. like starting to take out their phone. Like they yeah. could sense it almost, you know, and he, and he was there. And then, um, like after it started to get a little too hot and people started coming over and mm -hmm. then he's like, all right, thanks guys. And like, that was good. Oh, wow. And, um, it was, it was a, it was a good one. It was a good, wow. we were just like dumbfounded. We're like, okay, that was, that worked out Who's well. Who's it now? Like how <laughs> random. Yeah. It, but, but I mean, it, you, you did have an insight. Well, we it, had a little bit of knowledge and it's kind of things when you just, I don't know, you, you're prepared in some way, mm -hmm. you know, right. we're always just like, oh, we've done this stuff long enough where we're always prepared for like the unexpected and we know how to do it when it happens. Yeah. Like we, if we weren't prepared, we could have easily just been Kim, like, should we talk to him? Should we not we miss the opening? You right. Know? But because he was just, wa he was walking in and anything could have happened. I mean, sometimes yeah. just running yeah. up to somebody with a, a video camera or a phone can yeah. be a, a huge No, and that was off. also, it was, it's kind of about the nuance on that because mm -hmm. you want to be aggressive, but you also want to like respect the yeah, person. Of course. Yeah, of course. Right. Not just run up and no, shove yeah. a phone in his face. Yeah. Well, how was your decision to like, you, you get that content with him or it's like not even content. You got amazing stuff with him. He's like, fuck, I'm going to put it on the internet right now. Is there like a decision making yeah, yeah, process like, like, where it's like, wait, how do we do well, this? Do we hold on no, to this? No, because we all knew that, that there was poachers at the end oh, yeah. and we knew that oh. if we waited any too long, it would just be on some stupid, you know, BET channel or something or whatever, yeah. like yeah. MTV or High Snob or something. So Somebody's going to pick it up. Right. And they're just going to say like, they're not going to know it was us or it's our event or yeah. anything. They're just going to say Kanye skateboarding. Right. You know? So I think I just was like, let's let her rip immediately and like trying to um, airdrop it to each other, you know, on phones that were practically dying classic because <laughs> no, we, you know, yeah. we're never that prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I just wanted to get it out and make sure people knew that it was, that was, that was you guys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how long did it take to write a caption? That was tr tricky. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I bet. It's like, was, this is a good. defining, I got it. We got to get this right. Yeah, that was, um, fuck, how do we do that? I always change it later, but still. Yeah, no, I think I was just like, it doesn't, I don't even know what I wrote. I yeah. just wrote like, oh, Jenkum is now teaching kids of all ages or something. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. just like, and that was cool. You know, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Because he genuinely seemed like he's interested and wanted to mm -hmm. learn. And mm -hmm. he almost seems like, which is super flattering, like, he seems like the kid who really wanted to do it. You know, oh, when he was trying yeah. to escape, you know, yeah. huh. and it's almost like to whatever degree of fame he is and whatever, if you like him or not, there's something so humanizing about having someone at that scope come back down and be like, God, can you teach me how to Ollie? Yeah. You know, right. it was, it was almost like we saw yeah, the side of Kanye, him. What the fuck? Yeah. Like, and you can get a private teacher and yeah. whatever, but just to see him kind of just working with us on the street, trying to figure it out was great. I mean, he could stand and ride a board. So obviously yeah. he wrote he, a skateboard. He had been trying for sure yeah. because yeah. he... Like normal people who haven't skated, when they try to pop, they just jump. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that their two legs just jump up. Yeah. yeah. But he actually knew how to scoop up a little slide bit and slide it, yeah. up. So I knew he had some sort of intel. He's before tried that. before. Yeah. Right, like right, most right. people, just Air Jordan it. You know. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or slip out and fall on their ass. Yeah. Yeah. Like lean back and. Right. Oh God. Yeah. That, that would have been great footage of that happening. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, There's... and that was yo. He trusted us a lot because we were filming, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have look made himself look pretty dumb. Yeah. yeah. And he has no control over what I'm going to do with it That's later. That's true. So he trusted that he wasn't going to fall on his ass, and we weren't. You know, he wasn't going to make a fool of himself. Yeah. Right. Because it could have just been America's Funniest Home Videos as just as easily. Could have won ten, ten grand. Wait, ten grand from what? America's Funniest Home Videos. Oh, they pay for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I don't watch this shit. Oh, well, it's like know. 90s yeah. shit. But that's like one of those clips, though, that it doesn't just go viral in skateboarding. It just blows up in the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. that's when those, I mean, we had a lot of early successes like that. Mm -hmm. And those give you like such a good rush. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, it's the stories, chasing the stories for me is what gets, it's like, the most exciting thing. Yeah. Like we, uh, we did another Kanye thing. And so he knew about this already, which helped too, oh. was we, um, when his, he had a shoe come out with Adidas in 20 and early 2015. Yeah, people mm -hmm. were tripping. And it yeah. was called the whatever 350, the Yeezy Boost. Yeezy 350, Boost. Yeah. yeah. And so that came out and we, no one had done this yet or, you know, it wasn't a major thing to do, but we went and skated it. Yeah. And it came out on a Friday and we released it on a Monday. Okay. And um, that went super viral and it got on Kanye's radar 
and my friend did a job with him later. He was like a producer, and he mm-hmm. and he was saying he mentioned it, and he knew about it and stuff. Okay, so it was, Jengen was kind of on his radar. Interesting. Yeah. Um, thankfully to that video. Yeah. That's amazing, though. Wow. Can you imagine yeah. Kanye? Uh, it's just on. He, you're on his radar. I mean, it's cool, but you know, it is what we it is. We could be on his radar. Those guys, dude. We're, we're sometimes we give those people too much credit. You know, like they're looking at us, and yeah. you don't even know it. I mean, look at um, Virgil. Little- yeah. Virgil's, Virgil. Virgil's like, yeah, let's pull the CCS catalog and Big Brother and put it up and remix it. And right. people will never know. Yeah. It's like, dude, what the fuck? You spelled the dude's name wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Little Wayne. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, because what we have, we're so lucky, is it's like we grew up doing it and it's real and it's authentic. Mm-hmm. And that's what people, I think a lot of people are like, that's what I want in my life. You sure. can just tell, yeah. you know? Kanye. Get, can you have him get come on a show? Yeah, I'll hit him right now. Hit him up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shoot him a text, bro. What are some other ones that you had, like articles maybe that just kind of spontaneously just happened that you were like, I can't believe we just got this? Some victories. Let's see. Um, well, one I can talk about. It's a little bit skate industry-ish, but I'll tell you guys because I think it might be interesting is um, we we did an article on how corporations are changing skateboarding yep. in mm-hmm. 2012. Mm-hmm. And that was another kind of big one. And skateboarding at that point was very fearful of corporate involvement because they'd seen it happen in year 2000, you know, 2001. Yeah, it happened in cycles. And exactly. Yeah. And tried, it, was, it felt like it was coming back when the Donna Street League and X Games and how people were kind of looking at these outside sponsors. Right. Oh, and obviously shoes. That was the main point tip off with shoes you know adidas nike converse these were all kind of new i mean mm-hmm. they'd done it in the past but yeah. this wave was new so we did a piece um we had this contributor um bring a great piece and i fact checked it we even had it was like um almost like a thesis you know oh, it was yeah. a very academic wow. article mm-hmm. um and we put it out and talked about what could happen how what is happening and what we should be looking out for in the future yeah. mm. and that spread everywhere because skateboarding was split between these different sides and it was still kind of um a debate whether whether these bigger companies were good or bad right yeah and um birdo who's obviously very anti-corporate he's consolidated he he was like yo what you did was great um let's meet up at the trade show at uh agenda and let's talk about how we can further this cause okay i've at least like keeping people enlightened to some degree yeah sure and I was like, cool, sure, let's do it. And then he's like, you know what? And then he sent me an email. I don't remember if he asked or not, but he brought in uh, Kelly Bird from Lakai and uh, one other one other shoe company. Uh, oh, and Don Brown. Oh. And he's like, let's meet up and have a talk about how we can bolster our, our cause, you know? So I'm 22 at this time. This was really early. Mm. And uh, I meet up with them at the trade show and they're waiting in the lobby. And yeah, it's me who doesn't know. It's just like super wild. And then Don Brown, this, this, and that guy. And you're probably like a child to them. And they were like, oh, this is Jenkum? Like, this is <laughs> wow. the guy, you know? <laughs> and like, they were looking at me like I had some answers, yeah. you know, because I published this pretty, we put this thing out. And so we are meeting up and they're like, so what do you, what, what's your advice? Like, what should we do? Like, and we had all they we discussed like different ideas mm-hmm. like i was kind of just being um a backboard almost mm-hmm. and bringing a different perspective mm. and I, and they were like maybe we can on a skate shop wall maybe it's like you know when you buy food there's a vegan aisle you know and there's not he's like maybe there's a skate skater started aisle oh, and the not right. you know yeah, yeah. and then maybe there's um an infographic where it shows where all these skate companies come from mm. to try to educate people on like hey let's support ourselves yeah you know support core brand yeah or else. and yeah. i thought that was like a cool idea um i don't uh, some things maybe came out of it, maybe didn't, but mm-hmm. it was a really early experience where it was like, oh, people are looking at us to kind of do something. And, and find answers. Yeah. Or just they're looking at us to have some answers. Yeah. yeah right. And I was like, oh, shit. Now I, I actually have to take responsibility, yeah. which kind of sucks too, you know? You're basically a consultant for them. Yeah. Unwittingly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You're just having a discussion. Right. Oh, I was yeah. just hyped to be in the room. Yeah. And, and I remember after that, I was like, yo, you know, just telling my buddies like, you know, you tell people and it's like, well, who's this Don Brown guy? And then you look at his title and it's like VP of Soltec. And you're like, wait, but then Soltec owns America at knees. And you're like, so I'm talking with like, I'm 22. I'm like, I'm talking with this like super big deal guy. Yeah, you know? right. And it's not that Don isn't a big deal guy, but then you get to know everyone and it's a, you, you know, it gets disseminated a little bit. Yeah. Man. But wow, that was like a, that was an early like shocker kind oh. of. Did anything in that article kind of go that way like we're talking about all the did it move the needle yeah, did it move the needle whether like the the corporations coming in did it go that did it, did it predict the right things so yeah so we 
what we're working on now on Jenkum is we're trying to shake it up and do do different and and we have a history now so we can revisit things for the first Mm -hmm. time which is cool too so we actually did a little not a podcast but like a discussion where we all reread the article and then we presented it it's not out yet okay and then we're gonna kind of hypothesize how it came out oh um sick to kind of revisit it and so we had this discussion and um what it seems like is our thoughts of the industry at the time were much more grim than they became and the corporations or whatever the bigger companies kind of have been for the most, there's a lot of downsides, of course, mm-hmm. but for the most part, working with the skaters pretty well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's it's a kind of a big discussion. It's like its own podcast, but totally. Yeah. But a lot of the stuff that we thought would come true didn't like we thought skating would become like so rigid and there wouldn't be room for like these small little brands because they didn't bring back ROI. Uh-huh. And that's actually not the case. The bigger Complain brands want to yeah. support them yeah. because they make stuff cool and interesting and intrigue people. Right. So uh, we thought everything would be uh, like object, like skateboarding would become objective and it'd be nine club. And then now it's not quite that. And actually street league's kind of irrelevant. You oh, know? you know about us. No, no, different nine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like the numbers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we thought like it would be like sports. Sure. Like, hey, Sean Malto's got a 9.5 GPA on da 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 da. And yeah. it didn't become that. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's actually, I think we did a piece about it last year. Like, I think skateboarding's in a great place in terms of creativity. Mm-hmm. It's a, like you can do, you can find a lane. Mm-hmm. It might not be, it's a little flat. Like, it's not super exciting. People mm-hmm. always start like worrying about the future of skateboarding when yeah. it's going to be fine. Right. You can make whatever you want out of it. Yeah, totally. Right. And and it's like, and also, what are we talking about? Like the kids skating or the industry or the brands, whatever. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it was something, it was interesting. It was very timely at yeah. the time. Huh. What do you hate about skateboarding? That's actually a great question for this guy. <laughs> do I seem like I hate a lot of things? No. I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, what you know? do you hate? Like, don't like. No, I'm just what curious. You? I want you guys to answer it too. For uh, me, it's just like people just flips. being really judgmental before they know anything about something yeah that's true yeah yeah, yeah. we we're all guilty of that i think to oh, a certain totally. degree i wish when you're going into skateboarding as a skateboarder that you knew you know what you're signing up for you see that's I mean? where that education thing i was no, telling yeah, yeah, could yeah. help you know no, but as, like, give when, kelly a hand but if you're like a 12 year old kid getting a skateboard for the first time you have no idea what role you just like no no no. i'm talking about like getting sponsored and stuff like that oh yeah of coming mm-hmm. of what comes along with that responsibility yeah. Yeah. and that sometimes i wish they knew or a kid knew or whoever it is. Yeah, that's why you need to have mentors. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes you're just aimlessly going. Yeah, you might yeah. be a great skateboarder, but it's good to know. Hey, this is what's expected. Well, it's yeah, maybe yeah, the yeah. little things too. Like yeah. hey, I'm getting paid now. Well, save some money. You have to pay taxes. You're an independent yeah. contractor. Stuff like that. You're never save told. Save a third of your income. You're never told. Mm-hmm. You know. 100%. So that, that that's yeah. some stuff that that's stuff they don't even tell you in school. Of course. That's crazy. Well, that's they that's another thing. I never like, even you know, heard of independent no, contractors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? No, I had to learn. You have to learn everything, and it's yeah. like, okay, we're not equipped for this at all. You know, especially in the world we're in, which is like kind of like go do your thing, free freelance, for all. Yeah, yeah, free for all, yeah, sure. Um. I mean, definitely the the thing about skating is it's. I'm trying to think of something good to hate, you know. Well, uh, not hate, okay, <laughs> yeah. but maybe just uh, something, something good you just to like. Hate. Yeah, just you some know. place that needs improvement. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, in the beginning, I was bummed on skating because it was a little too closed, and it was like I felt really like an outsider, hmm? you know. Like even hmm. going to the. This is going to sound silly now, but going to the trade show and kind of being this like New Yorker Asian kid, I was kind of like. Um, intimidated because it's all these like, you know, ta- all over tat, like fucking heshy dudes from Venice Beach, you know, and they'd all have their clicks and all that. Sure. And now it kind of almost feels silly because how diverse skating is with mm-hmm. like the, everyone having their own thing. But back then I was definitely like, fuck, like, fuck this kind of like jock fest, you know? Yeah. Mm, interesting. And yeah. thankfully skating has changed a lot, you know, since then. And in some ways, it's become more watered down, but there's still those pockets. You just kind of have to find them. And I feel like uh, skaters now appreciate all types of different skating. Yeah. Like, knowing, like, Bobby Puglia loves, like, 80s vert skating. Like, right. it's insane to me. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, back then, there was only one, there was, like, one portal you could go through to come right. up in skating. Mm-hmm. You, had, you had to go to the ASR. You had to work your way through there. Mm-hmm. You couldn't just be at home and start your own YouTube channel and or fucking yeah. blog. Like, yeah. Yeah, you can just like so much more stuff now, but, yeah, it's... It's more inclusive sometimes. Um, yeah, it's just more inclusive. And I think uh, I feel more at home now. And maybe that's oh, just yeah. growing into yourself, too. Yeah. When you're in yeah, the early 20s. Say it's kind of maybe a yeah, personal thing. It you know? might be because, yeah. like, 
I talk with skaters now and a lot of them feel that way too. Mm. And I'm like, dude, you're in it. Like everyone likes you. You're cool. Like, don't worry about it. Just don't blow it. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> blow it. Right. Sure. Yeah. And, and also I kind of, again, I talked about this, but just having more support for the skaters themselves, right. mm. having, it's just heartbreaking to see someone be kind of worse off than a 16 year old when they're 35. It's crazy. You know, like yeah. they're like, what do I do? And they can bear like their communications, like poor and all that stuff. And you kind of, it's limiting skill yeah. sets. Yeah. No skill sets. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Besides skating and it's right. It'd be cool to have some more paths for those people. Yeah. Also, like, yeah, and uh, and well, as like you said, skateboarding like, grabs these kids when they're young, like yeah. like mm-hmm. just sponsored wise, whatever. Right. Like, quit, quit school. Yeah, like um, from like sixteen school? to yeah. like twenty, that's your window. Right. And then they'll grab you, take you all around the world, whatever. But they're not teaching you shit. Mm-hmm. They're not preparing you for yeah. like. Afterwards. No, well, no, it's that's actually like a yeah. crutch because yeah. you don't do any of the booking, negotiations, travel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you do negotiations. You talked for about stuff. it before. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't even know how to book a vacation right now. Yeah, it's just a different world. Yeah. When you have yeah. uh, when you have a mom or dad looking after you and doing it all for you, you yeah. know. Sometimes soccer mom soccer dad can be really bad for a kid. Yeah. And sometimes they can be really good if they're depending on how they let the kid deal with it. You know what I mean? How supportive they but are. But yeah, they have to. I feel like the parents to all the parents right now with the kids growing up. Oh yeah, take let, it from Kelly, a single guy. <laughs> hey, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I was a team manager. Oh yeah, true, true. I will say this: let the kid do his thing and let him do what he wants. And then guide him and give him advice on how to deal with situations, but don't don't speak louder than the kid. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know yeah. What I mean? That happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, does. how do my kids get sponsored? How do we do? How do they turn yeah. pro? And my I, my answer is always like, well, do they love it? Like, let them love it. Yeah. Don't don't hinder their path by by forcing stuff on them. Yeah, and if know? they even do, you want to do that? Do they want to do that? Yeah. Right. Let little, let little Johnny discover this right. whole world for themselves, right. just and like every other skater has before. Right. And help them out a- along the way. We could talk about the skate industry forever. You I know, know, I don't think it ever ends. But uh, and the question is, is there a right way or a wrong way? You know what I mean? Like it's it's. Is it right for you? It's tough. You know, it's a it's an interesting industry to say the least. What hurdles you guys have now, like three and a half years in that that you're not like you're trying to figure out at the moment bring in extra help yeah i would just say our time yeah our time building this thing up and um having it just myself and roger doing the back end of it editing fucking websites i mean every little thing all all of our time is taken up yeah we need we now need to build a team yeah right it's like are we going to build a team now and go into 2021 on a different level Mm -hmm. or are we just going to stay the same do the same shit and then 2021 just still remain on that same shit path. Yeah, it's, you know? it's super hard because you, we want you know to grow. We want to, to evolve. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, you know, it works to some degree, but then yeah. people start to tune out too. Yeah. At, at, yeah. at X amount of years. Well, you got to yeah. have it fresh and right. new. And, you know, it's like we, I, I say with the experience show all the yeah. time, like we haven't even hit our stride yet. Yeah. You know, we have so much that we want to do bandwidth. Yeah. We I think don't that, have it. That's where you have the most opportunity for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys worry about running out of guests or no? No. No, no. There's so many cool skateboarders. You can yeah. name ten people right now that we haven't been on the show, and that's right. ten, ten weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a while. I, I personally think it's crazy, just in general, that we've had over three and a half years. There's always someone they come to here and they sit down for three mm-hmm. and a half years to yeah, get someone to come good. to one place is pretty insane. And we've only yeah. taken three days off. Yeah. 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 Well, you guys are psychos. That's I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We're I've out never of done our, that. We're out of our minds. <laughs> yeah. That but you wild. know what, though? We have fun doing it. People enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And it drives us, you know? If you're having fun doing something, we're not working, you know? Yep. Yeah. I, at times, I'm sure you go through the same stuff where you fucking hate it, you know? And you question yourself. Right. Why am I doing oh, that? Why am that I happens doing all this? the time. But for anyone, anything. Of course. Skaters, I, of this, that. course. I will say that us as skateboarders, we have built our businesses the same way as we started skating. Yeah, like yeah. I, I like the way that you said, like I, who sponsored you first? Yeah, I literally meant that because that's kind of the way I looked at you as a skateboarder right. coming yeah. up, doing your thing as a website. Yeah, we're all doing. We did the same thing for Night Club. It's yeah, everything. It's funny because the evolution was, um, it's unblemished. It's like as you saw it, you know. It's like a, it's like a little. There was no pre planning. You're kind of seeing it unfold yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like reality TV yeah. building a business because you want to do it because you're yeah. You're just, you just want you love it right and it just grow into something yeah well that's one re- reason why we started the nine club experience show right. is because for me i, I love sitting down to- talking to people mm-hmm. I, I i feel like i could sit down and talk to anybody you know whether it's an actor a youtuber a skater a fucking football player whatever but bed bath and beyond but yeah somebody <laughs> bed bath and beyond could sit down there but 
at the end of the day, I, I want to get creative. Yeah. You know, I want to like, I want to let the creative juices flow and come up with ideas and, and insert segments and do fun shit. You know, and that's why we started the nightclub experience and having guests back and, and do, just doing fun shit. Um, and we, we still, we just don't have time, you know, and we need well, to build told, a team. I told you earlier, I was like, when you guys started the experience, I was like, these guys are, they're biting off more than they can chew. Totally. You know? I was like, just, I know how and much work it is and to do, it's true. do yeah. something consistent yeah. and then do it twice. Yeah. I'm like, but it was cool. You took the risk on uh, doing the dollar episodes yeah. in the beginning. Right. Because that killed me. <laughs> it, it, in what way? Oh, well, I'm telling you, yeah. the, the re. We if somebody, a good if product, somebody right. is spending money that they work hard for, right. I want to give them something phenomenal that they can enjoy agree, that is worth their dollar. It's right. a dollar, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Coffee costs more than that. Coffee costs a lot more than that. So Starbucks uh, yeah. went up 20, uh, and, 20 cents. Yeah. And it drove me fucking nuts yeah. that I, we couldn't, we didn't have the time or the energy or the bandwidth to produce that type of content. So eventually we were just like, fuck it, dude, we, we need to just do this for free and mm -hmm. not, and, and lower that. I'm thinking about, what you, what? I'm sorry, you're thinking about a dollar. It's like you go to the 99 cent store, you get like toilet paper there. It's like the worst toilet paper of all time. Yeah. yeah. I, so I was like almost going to say you're shooting yourself in the foot by yeah. doing a dollar. Yeah. Like just go straight to five or 10. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. Fuck it. I, I, like yeah. a dollar. Yeah, but you want to still like. It's not even worth the hassle to put in yeah. your Venmo what, account. What do you pay for a dollar <laughs> right. that you get that you're like, fuck yeah, yeah. I paid for a dollar for this. Dude, <laughs> and you need gold. so many subscribers yeah. to make yeah. any yeah. money. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah we had 200 people pay. Oh, how much you make? 200, 200 bucks. bucks. Yeah. 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 Dude, we started the experience like doing it for 99 cents or whatever. Like yeah. we only got like a thousand views. Yeah. And now like we're getting like 50,000 views. So now pay wallet, baby. No, but that's the thing too. Charge them up. And the thing that you have to realize and when you take a step back and look at it, what's benefit, what's going to benefit us in the long run is actually having it for free and the views and the subscribers and all this other stuff. Right now, we're in a in a era of like um, people subscribers is like currency almost. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's, it's like atten attention. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, and that's going to benefit us in the long run right. is having these views and all that stuff. And that's by getting rid of that paywall. Now a lot of brands want to fuck with us because like we're not hiding that content behind some sort of paywall. Right. Until yeah. you get like a to a mass level, mm -hmm. you should just go, I believe you should go free. Yeah. Like yeah. until you're Howard Stern and you can get exactly. away with that. Right. And even I think that's like, it's poor because he's alienating. Like he put the, he just interviewed uh, Hillary Clinton, yeah, right? Yeah. They put that out without a paywall almost. I feel like to flex and show like, Hey, we're still out here. Totally. Because they they yeah. become irrelevant when it's stuck in this little zone. Oh right? yeah. You know, yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, you just, you, you, you try stuff, you live and you learn and you know, it just, at the end of the day, it was killing me. I was literally going to have a heart attack. He was physically it, sick. Well, yeah. yeah. It, I, it, I made myself tough. sick from like being yeah. bummed on shit. It was tough. Yeah. Where, was where tough. I'm like, if one, one person is like feels like they got ripped off yeah because the product or whatever we sent them a t-shirt or something i get bummed so right. like, damn that fucking person you know the like fucking mug broke yeah, when i sent it to yeah, oh, exactly God damn it That's you know yeah. post office fault. right well, yeah. it's kind of like the etn thing like people were they oh we got this new thing and if yeah. subscribe to it yeah. Yeah, but they didn't have any content they didn't, yeah, but they didn't content. know what they were even putting out well they they yeah, yeah. they kind of blew it where you can't start a thing right without, yeah. like having a plan. anything yeah, yeah. That, that goes back the to the like you when you're starting your thing yeah. like you wanted to make sure you had a library there right like i didn't want to be stuck with my pants down yeah you know not in that such situation <laughs> at least like <laughs> maybe <that>? in others <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no but for us youtube is a is a is a great platform you know they offer a lot of opportunities to you know make money and and you know sustain they were sort of our first our wait so sponsor. is youtube sponsoring yeah. this no no oh, but okay, but okay. just being on youtube yeah and, yeah you know, ad revenue and stuff like I that. I think YouTube's it's, 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 yeah. probably the best, honestly. Yeah. Like the amount of control you have, mm -hmm. um, at least perceived control. I don't sure. read the, the whole thing when you sign up because mm -hmm. no one else does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you, do you have it. a YouTube channel? Yeah, we do. We, so well, you like, put your content up yeah, on Yeah, right? so, yeah. you know, the two ways to, or two popular ways to do it are have your own player mm -hmm. or go on YouTube. Right. And our own player, we can... Um, you know, put certain pre-roll ads Monetize to it, it yeah. but then you're paying for the player and if it works and if it's slow and it breaks down and whatnot. So yeah. I was just like, dude, let's just do YouTube. And it's funny. A lot of the kids I talk to are like, yeah, I follow your YouTube. Like they don't know about the website or, sure. the, yeah. or the events yeah. or, the, or the printed stuff. Well, we nowadays do. a YouTube page is your website almost. Yeah. No, I mean, it. Sometimes for some people, it's Instagram too. Mm -hmm. Some that's people true. know of nine club or Jenkum or whatever. I was like, or Thrasher, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a cool Instagram account. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you're like, well, I do these 18 other things, yeah. and that's fine. Like, 
That's cool. Yeah. It's a discovery yeah. channel pretty much, you know. Because also some people we forget, well, you know, we're in it every day, but people don't follow skateboarding like that. They follow it as their outlet when they're, you know, the side thing. Like they follow baseball, this, that. Yeah. They follow that one skate account because they want to see something crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know? Sure. So cool. when I follow stuff that's not in skating, I won't know that much about it all right. the time. Right. And that's okay. Maybe if you have time, you go investigate yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But if it's yeah. a funny thing and I find out later, oh, it's an advertising agency or they do this or that. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Like, fuck Jerry. You know, oh, yeah. you guys know fuck Jerry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you follow the first huge. one kind of like. Yeah. The you follow fuck Jerry and you're like, oh, this is just a funny meme guy. But he's like a like, media company now. You're like, oh, this is a whole company. But if I went on an interview or talked about it and I said, oh, I follow this funny Instagram account, he'd probably be, I'm not, you know, or he, I don't know, it's whoever. Weird. Yeah. I'm not an Instagram account, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Big business. Yeah. It's yeah. huge. Mm. I mean, they're killing it, I think. I haven't followed it recently, but what's I the other dude? Like it. the fat Jewish? Is that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's another one like that too. There's right? a bunch of There's a whole there. realm for that now, and like Wecking Ball. Going back to we talked about Wecking Ball. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we definitely did the first big piece on him, um, and there's a lane for that sort of like character media company almost now. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't around maybe in five years ago. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, speaking about Jankum stuff and your YouTube page and everything and the, and the pieces that you come out with are, are fucking great. You guys are killing it right now. I, seriously, I, I love everything you guys are doing. Yeah, enjoy it. My Thanks, only guys. thing, and I've said it before on the show, I want you to be more in front of the camera, whether it's just talking to people or kind of curating that piece or whatever. I think you're great, yeah. you know, and I think you, I think people need to see you more. You know, I think you could Thanks. really drive. You got a face for camera. You do. You do. Yeah. And, then, I, and I, hair you guys too. You told me this like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm late to the game now. Well, dude, the funny part is when I see the content you put out, yeah. I think about w your face, how you're reacting. Behind to, the scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. looking that, at it. Yeah. I'm, I'm laughing at Thinking of you laughing at dude, that. Dude, in the Nestor thing, when yeah. you guys went into the hotel, oh, I yeah. saw you in the reflection yeah. and I'm like, if it, he needed to be in yeah, that, not, the, not just in the reflection of the right, mirror. Yeah, in the right. fuck, he needed to be in there. I think in the beginning, uh, well, I was too shy in the beginning. Too shy. And I, and it, again, you know, it was like, probably afford one camera operator. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. It's, it's most operations still now are me and one person. I'm the producer, they're the filmer. Right. Yeah. The, the dude's got a lav on, and that's our setup, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. Like, we, we take it pretty far with that. Yeah, and yeah. I like that because it feels authentic and it feels yeah. intimate. You know, the, uh, the stuff. Back when Jengum started, a lot of stuff felt overproduced and trying to cover stuff up. I'm mm. like, no, show when you put down the camera. It kind of makes it feel more reality ish. Yeah. yeah. You know, like show when you bump into someone. Like, don't cut. That's the good shit. That's it. Yeah, that's You're the cutting funny out shit. the yeah. good shit. Totally. Yeah. You know? I agree. So, um, the fuck ups are always the best. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it just brings some reality to the situation. Mm -hmm. like, like some polished like, fucking. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And that's yeah. why I always wanted, I was like, let's jank him. Like, 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 let's do it raw. Like, let's just go for it. You know? Exactly. And like, if we don't get it, that's the story. Yeah. So you're saying you were, you 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 were shy in the beginning. Oh yeah. And now, it, it, I mean, it takes a lot of, you know, balls to just reveal yourself. I think I this. was I was shy, um, and I wasn't experienced enough. I was just I mean maybe that would have been cool for then, mm -hmm. but I felt like I would just come off as like this kid who's trying to do this thing that doesn't know what he's talking about. Did you want to just kind of make, maybe be the man behind the curtain? Yeah. Not yeah. Knowing? I didn't I didn't want to be a, a public like this. Right. This is nine years later, yeah. and this is the most public thing I've ever done. Like, I don't... You've done interviews, but not... But they're all, like, text interviews. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I've never really been a host. Mm -hmm. um, but the things I've done, like, the two th other things I've done, I've started actually enjoying, you know? Sick. And it's it feels, like, liberating to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is me. This is what I do. Right, you know? right. Um but it just take it took me a minute, and now I'm now we actually just started shooting where we're using more hosts. Like we just filmed something. We went, I went to Brian Herman's house. We uh, you know I was kind of on camera. We did something with uh, I forget who. Well, I don't want to say it, but someone else. Okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah, we had Alex Raspa and like kind of like driving in the car. You know, mm -hmm. the roll up, little inspired by Epically Later style. Sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because in the beginning, people um, when we were doing the hanging out with like the video stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, people, we, we weren't on, on camera and that was okay, but now everyone kind of has their own lifestyle piece mm -hmm. and it's like, what can we do different? It's like, oh, let's put ourselves out there more because yeah. there's not that many like personalities left. Right. You know? So it's like, where can we, every, like, uh, Thrasher has like out there, I think, which mm -hmm. kind of feels like a hanging out with and pocket mag has something else. Yep. 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 And these other guys, everyone films kind of like that. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, fuck. Like everyone's doing this now in the beginning. We're the only people because we were just there before them. 
um, it's not new and different, but it was it was just our flavor. Yeah. You know? So the, the slice of life thing, I see you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Slice of life. Yeah, yeah, same thing. That was similar style, but now it's like okay, let's take a step back and do it, mm-hmm. do it differently. Yeah. I just think you're great, man. You need to do more stuff in front of <laughs> the camera. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I got I got some work to do. I mean, have, do you guys feel like? Have you learned a lot through this process? Like, do you guys all feel super comfortable outside of this room, just on camera? Oh yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. I think I think I think uh, Wait, why you off, Roger? But right, like, right. I feel like Roger's kind of benefited the most out of all because me and Chris have kind of been. In I've front lived of the behind the camera for years. Yeah, right. Yeah. You see life just through a lens. Yeah, yeah. I mumble a lot. I don't talk very well, and like, I don't know I, that. how I, much I am a goof, filmers make. But I am a goof, and I do enjoy fucking like making people laugh and doing dumb having shit. Fun. Yeah, 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 having fun. Yeah, having fun. I think it's cool to see Roger kind of. You, 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 this changed, it's opened your mind a little bit, I would say, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty rad. Huh. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, I look back at old episodes and like, you're way more like confident, like pers- you're bigger than you were before. Mm-hmm. I mean, quite Whoa. literally, but, but also. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. No, nah, he's been working out. Is that Nick, oh, Nick oh, Tiamper oh, your oh, diet? Oh, oh, oh. I, thought you were I saw him oh. the other day. He rolled up. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what have you been doing? Swole, like, dude. Been, you know? I was trying to flex, dude. No, nah, it's harder to see on camera if you see you in person, though. You got, uh, you got some more. Take your shirt off. Dude. Some build. I can't right um, now. I, I will say this, though. <laughs> it, it did take a long time to uh, be comfortable. In, in the early editing process, I would take out little things that I would do. If I, oh, I lick my lips right there. And it was very, I was very insecure. <laughs> Like, I'm just like no it's true <laughs> but I was very insecure on how I would come off and nowadays I don't give a fuck it just slips right by but you know what's funny I can have these fucking six cameras pointed at me and feel totally comfortable and as soon as I'm out in the wild or something and somebody busts out an iPhone I freeze up I I, I, I turn off I don't know what it is that little iPhone pointed at me mm-hmm. somebody's like hey will you say this to somebody I'm like I, I I I just I don't know what to do right now. It's fucked. But you do them all, or do you turn any down? I I try to do yeah, something. Yeah. I, I try it's to just weird one like it's unexpected. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. You know. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. But I don't know. But you you you're gonna you're breaking down that. that yeah, barrier I think I'm just like yourself. we're we're working on. Um, it's been a while, but we're working on Jenkins Volume Three now. Sick. And um, it's gonna be part book and part doc. And so the awesome. doc is going to have a little bit more Second. me and the team behind the Perfect. team coming forward. If you need forward. me to voice over, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, that's I'm, actually I'm possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how, how is it working with your team now? Like, is it? Do you feel pretty comfortable just kind of let things go, or do you like? Are you pretty control freak? You're the boss. Way? Yeah, yeah. See, being the boss sounds really cool, but in reality, it's it sucks not. ass. <laughs> yeah. Being the boss just means that ultimately all the decisions and all the headaches and good and bad come back. Lay to on you, you yeah, they and. Down. It's everyone like, for instance, my buddies would be like, I'd be like, fuck, I'm late to the office today because we have a small office in like a bigger co-working space. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, who cares? You're the boss. And I'm like, no, nah, it's setting the pace wrong. People who come in are going to think that I'm lazy and this and that, right. you know, checking. Nothing's going to get done the way that I would like the energy to be. You're not you leading know? by example. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how I'm always off. like, I'm always like. I don't want to tell you what to do. And I, and, and I have a really great team and I, I try to let them have as much freedom as possible. Mm-hmm. I just want to be doing it. And if you see me doing it, hopefully you understand, Hey, we're trying to work towards something, you know, being a boss is very uncomfortable Yeah, because you really have to, uh, it's just, I don't like titles or anything. No, I, and, hate, and, I hate titles. I don't yeah. like being called a boss or, or yeah. anything, you know, even elders right. will be, Oh, you're the boss. I'm like, dude, shut up. Don't yeah. say <laughs> that shit. No, it's almost, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. but you have to tread lightly as well yeah. because people don't like to be told what to do. Even if they're getting paid, you know, they don't like to be right. told what to do. You have to really curate your your team in a, in a certain demeanor i feel like you know 100%. you can't just be like hey go do that can you do that oh no, just, no, no, no. Blah, blah, blah. Also, you have to be you have to tread lightly yeah. i think though. i think in chris's case or maybe in your case too you kind of just do it and all of a sudden you're the boss you yeah, didn't yeah. sign up for it no no it yeah. wasn't like it wasn't some megalomania where i'm like yeah. i'm doing this because <laughs> right. i want to be yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. you're like oh <laughs> shit i am the boss yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You no know. people start looking to you and say ian what are we doing about this and i go uh oh i guess i have to do it yeah sure yeah a lot of fires to put out. Yeah. And um, for me, I look at everyone kind of as like, we're all co-workers, right? Yeah. I look at it more as a band. Exactly. And it's like, everyone kind of knows what role they're playing. Mm-hmm. And we like, sometimes I'll play drums, sometimes someone else will be a lead singer. 
but we all have to be motivated towards working towards the same thing or it's not going to work. Yep. Exactly. So like yeah. your visions of the show to some degree have to align. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like a little disagreement is good because that's going to push you both forward. Like, oh, yeah. It'll make a better product. Yeah. And oh, Roger and I butt heads all the time. Yeah. And, that's, and, it, and that's it's great. Positive. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it, actually. And that's that's a positive thing. Yeah. If absolutely. you can realize that that's like a creative process thing. Mm-hmm. Of course. So we have like meetings every Monday and people come in and we each bring pitches. There's like four of us in the in Monday mm-hmm. meeting. Like we that. meet at like 10 a.m. to 12 mm. and we go, okay, like the the focuses are like what's happening this week do you have anything that is timely and wh- how are you guys feeling and what's new you know mm-hmm. and so pe- people bring stuff in and it's like creative writing you shoot a lot of it's shot down you yeah. gotta be able to take constructive criticism yeah like a hundred percent yeah and but that's sure, it's hard sure to do sometimes i'm sure there's ideas like that's a great idea but marinate on that and you know, make it better. Yeah. You know, I like the idea of no, no idea is a bad idea. Yeah. Right. Because any idea can be transformed into mm-hmm. a great idea. You yeah. Know? Totally. So it's like, bring everything to, let's bring everything to, on right. the table. You know, I don't care if it's stupid. Right. Let's, it's not stupid. We could build on it. Yeah. You know? It's a, it's yeah. a molding putty. Like yeah. every idea doesn't start off amazing. Yeah. We'll just be like, Hey, we want, for instance, what, what just recently, um, but at least someone brought an idea to the table. Yeah, it's true. It's energy too. Yeah. Like you want to know, like ultimately Jenkins on platform and all the people I work with, they, you know, they're doing it because they want to have a piece, a story, a period in skateboarding, yeah, you know? Sure. So it's like, what do you want to do? You know, like, right. what's your story? If you like Teeth Gear Chart, let's go do a piece you on gotta Heath. You got to enable people. Yeah, you go do the piece on Heath. That's your piece, you yeah. know? And then it becomes just like everyone's working on their project separately, but together. Yeah. For mm-hmm. It's for Jenkum, but you're doing this. I'm going on the Nine Club. This person's doing that. And you can look at the other person and be like, that's a good, that was a good project. Right. And yeah. that's like, an, it's inspiring. So. This is the most that we've talked about ourselves on a, on a, on oh, a show guys, with a guest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah it's because, not about us. It's about yeah. the guest, you know? Yeah, but, but this we're is kind fun. of in the we're, same yeah. vibe. Yeah, we're so like in kind of, a parallel world. But exactly. people yeah. want to know about you guys. And, and I, know. I know you kind of sometimes, it's hard for you to interview each other because you you your frame of reference is so small we we just make fun of one another yeah right, right. and that's cool too <laughs> yeah. like that's great but also the stuff i'm asking it's like the outside in thing yeah, i started about course. talking i see you guys from the outside yeah, yeah. so i'm going to ask things that a kid in korea the uk australia might want to know about i totally, I totally get know. it i people always say like dude yeah. you need to do your a nine club you right. know you need to have so-and-so interview you or whatever and yeah. i'm like I don't know. This is like our show. And I, I just, if you follow the show and watch the nine club experience show and you learn you, about you're going to learn about us, yeah. you, you will. know, it's like, you do. I don't need to, I mean, I love, I would love to have a Howard, you know, see Howard Stern interview for mm-hmm. sure, mm-hmm. but I don't need it because I learn about Howard Stern every time I listen to him, you know? So I get all that inside information, but people, the fans want it. Like I'm a Howard fan. I'm like, I, I know I know what you're going to say, but I'll still listen to a podcast. He was on the Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. I listened, that one was good. Yeah. 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 Um, he was on the one with Dave Letterman, too. Dave oh, Letterman. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was great. Yeah. But it's cool. I don't know. People ask me all the time. I don't know. It's just, well, well how does, your skaters and cars was good. When they're thank you. You need to do more like that. I appreciate like that. that. I know, but it's, it's, just, it's a different light, too. Yeah. yeah. Like well, I think it, you were saying, like, I'm so afraid of being the public. Like, that was your first time of, like, having an edit come out without you having control. And you're like, oh, there is hope out there. Yeah, like it, it turned out well. Yeah, it, was, it turned out really well. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Yeah, people you know? want to see you outside of this. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And you're yeah. going to be different. The vibe is going to be different. Absolutely. I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. But you're yeah. you, dude. Yeah. It's How different could it be? No, I think it can be different. Well, I mean, we were talking about like going to the courthouse and whatever. Like, it's not like the craziest thing. Would you in the take world. Uh, Chris on a helicopter ride? I would do I would do a hanging out with it. It would be I would want to do something totally different, though. I would love that. Oh, it's funny because we mentioned um, Beatrice. No, we mentioned Pocket Mag, and they do the little—I yeah, yeah. uh, forget what they're called—the um, similar day in the life yeah, things yeah, yeah. or whatever. They hit me up to do one. I sorry, Pocket Mag, I never got back to you yeah. over email, but um, I was—we were busy and stuff, and they were. I'm, I was telling Raj, I'm like, what the hell are they going to film of me all day? I don't do anything. Yeah. I you come over and sit on my couch and and edit. And I told you, film that. I know, but I'm just like, dude, Paul, I don't know what the but, hell. But I, like, it's I the don't nuances want, that what we're talking about. I don't want, I want to see you edit. Yeah. Believe it or not, I want to see not five hours of it, right. but I want to see. I want to <laughs> no. see about thirty seconds. Right, yeah. but I, I don't want to yeah. curate something. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't want to fake something and be like, well, Pocket, oh, okay, well, let's go to the, let's go skating, and I'm like, well, I'm not skating today. Yeah. You know, I was skated yesterday. Let's go. F- I gotta go to Home Depot. I don't want to curate stuff. You know, it's like if you want to follow me around like then it's gonna be boring no i that, that's where i think you're doubting yourself though like we went to brian herman's 
and he's like, hey, I got to go pick up this stuff. Uh, you know, he, we just did errands with him. Yeah. Okay. But sometimes that's like the most humanizing and fun stuff. Mm-hmm. That was what a it's lot true. of OG like publications did that I thought did wrong is it was always formulaic. Wake up, it's run curated. into the homies, yeah. go to the skate park. And then like before they get wasted, they close the door and they're like, thanks for seeing my, seeing my day in my life. <laughs> yeah. you know? You're like, that's not a day in your life. No, you, know? you totally curated. Why do you think IRL stuff is so popular in yeah. real life? Yeah. It's like people want to see your real life, yeah. you know, and, and, Twitch, and all that these you're things. human too. Like you have to be willing to kind of stumble a little bit. Yeah, of course. You know? Yeah. So you do all these write-ups and you have these, uh, you know, segments, but like, how does it, how do you come across getting the skating in on there? Because I get surprised sometimes when I just see only skate parts. Yeah, on Jankum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um, Which is, I mean, no, no, just not even No, no, no. Nope. I mean, I started, it was like, we always joke, it's the anti-skateboarding, skateboarding magazine. Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like. I mean, like, you, you guys end up with the, the Nestor piece. And yeah. That was originally supposed to be on Enjoy's YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like a lot of this stuff, I mean, we're putting out more skating now too, but in the beginning I was like, I'm not putting it out unless it's like my jaws on the floor. You know, mm. it's like really different. Mm. And now it's, so we put out some like, uh you know, fancy lad stuff. And Rowan. Like some, yeah, right, Rowan yeah. and different stuff. Um, but fuck, kind of what, what's your initial question again? I don't know. Like, how does that come? Oh, how, does it come? how do you like, be like, oh, this is some skate ring we want. Now we're going to, now site. we're going to show skating on it. Has, yeah. It has to kind of have a, uh, are we fulfilling something? And yeah. a lot of the time we're not like, we get so many good, here's the tricky part. We get so many good submissions from so many places, you know, like whatever, 20 full length videos or parts a week. Wow. And, we watch maybe 10 or 15 or as many as we can that yeah, week. Sure. Um, maybe not 20, maybe 10 or 15. Um, and the skating's always good, but the editing and the music and everything else is usually very un- unenthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. Like it's like, hey, here's a New York City VX 1000 edit to Biggie. And you're like, dude, come on. Same like, old. Like there's nothing you can do unless the skating's so high. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And nowadays music rights and all this yeah. bullshit, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, we're, very difficult. It is, it is. But even so, I'm just like, it has to jump out at me. Yeah. Um, oh. And then, you know, for the bigger parts, like it's since Thrasher has like such a stronghold on that, it'll just go to Thrasher. So it won't be an option for some. Mm-hmm. And for other parts, we'll just be like, eh, you know. But Thrasher, they, they, they don't have the capacity. It's crazy. Yeah. They, they don't they're, have the they're capacity. They're sitting on so much like photos and like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you did the Rowan Davis part, lineup. like if that would have came out on Thrasher, I probably would have missed it. Yeah. Just because there's so much. But since you guys put it out and it was a new face, like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was pretty yeah, hyped on check that. Check it out, yeah. And, yeah. and that's why I want to get behind more stuff like that mm-hmm. because it's like we're putting someone on, we tell a little bit of a story, we do an interview, um, we show his video part, and hopefully we tried to, like, package it up and show, like, I made it on the homepage banner. Like, let's stand behind him and show that we got his back. Yeah. Right. And it's not just a one day or a one hour thing. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so, like, I did, like, a couple posts on Insta and all mm-hmm. that. Um, and we want to do more of that when it aligns and it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Um, and I, and yeah, I will say, should. Thrasher is awesome for posting all that stuff. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just, just fucking inundated with fucking it's, shit. Yeah, it's a lot, doing, so it's yeah. hard to spot it out sometimes. Yeah, and in the beginning, we we took a break, like we didn't do it because I was like, well, they're doing it, so why am I gonna just like like Thrasher's great at what they do? Oh yeah. Why am I gonna go and and be like, hey, uh, you want a part? Like, let's share these parts. You know? Right. Like, I was just like, hey, you're going to go do that. I'm going to do these things. I don't even, people would be like, who are your competitors? I'd be like, mm, no one, because right. I, do, I don't consider, I'm not putting up parts. I don't care about that. Yeah. You know? Um, but now I think there's enough parts and Thrasher is so full. I'm like, mm-hmm. let's get behind some stuff we like. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. exactly. And, and let uh, it shine. Let it shine and give it, give it the airtime because... People will remember it. They'll remember that it's a Jenkum thing because it's unusual. Right. Yeah. Like I remember when you guys were discussing the Rowan Davis thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of you guys was like, "Oh, Jenkum, interesting." Like already, you're gonna remember that a little longer because it's left field. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And if we can do parts on people that haven't quite been like out yet or like discovered, and mm-hmm. it'd be cool too. Yeah. You could be the catalyst for people. I mean, it's, jump off. It's yeah. not the worst. You know. Yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah. Well, well, that's also something kind of. I'm sure how you guys feel about it. It's like the bigger you grow or whatever, mm-hmm. you realize that like the help, the, you you get more satisfaction out of helping and being a part of someone else's oh trajectory. Oh my God, it's yeah. the best. And in the beginning, I didn't understand that because when you're young, you're just like, I want fame and money and I want to be really good looking. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get a little older and you're like, oh, that felt so good to help that person do whatever it may be. Oh, it's and incredible. I've had people be like, hey, that interview helped me with this. And ultimately I think it got me this it's sponsor or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, 
that was more valuable than a two hundred dollars I could have got from something else. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it happens with us with the person sitting in the chair, yeah. and also just uh, people that are out there in the world that yeah. are emailing us, telling us. You know, you helped us. You helped right. me with this. I have depression. You guys right. are there every week for me. Those and, are the heavy DMs. Dude. Oh my god! Yeah. And we, know? we get that too. And yeah. I'm most like, oh shit, that's way bigger than this little. We're yeah. seeing it like this. You or know? the yeah. best is when people are like, dude, I haven't skated in years. I'll list your podcast. Yeah. And now I'm skating again. Right. Yeah. You're like, yeah. That's, I'm 50 years old. Right, I haven't yeah. skated in 30 that's years. Incredible. Yeah. 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 Just bought a board. Right. You know. And you know, I would hear that as a kid, and I kind of thought it was fluff. Like everyone just be like, I'm thankful to be here. And I'm like, yeah, we know you're thankful to be here. Yeah, but now, sure. of course, I'm that fucking jackass who's like, I'm just thankful to be here. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and, but I really mean it. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not just like, it's not autopilot. Right. Like, I, I realize I'm in a very fortunate situation and I worked hard to get here, but a lot of things aligned and a lot of people backed us and I have a great team and I'm like, I'm thankful to be here. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no other way to say it. And we're thankful to be here too. We're thankful you're here, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How dif- difficult is it to do those? Those Jacob mixes? Um, it's pretty. Um, I so I have my brother who makes music. He's a producer. Mm-hmm. So I was I. Someone writes down a track list and then I give it to him to blend. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he won't blend it right in the order they want because they're not in music, so they don't know necessarily like the hey, flow this, of it all. Yeah. This this track won't really go with that track. Well, wait. Yeah. Explain the explain the mixes that you're talking about. Yeah. So. We do. Um, we started Jenka mixes in like 2013, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to find out uh, skaters' music taste. And then we kind of. I would like the camera. I like tangible things, you know. Mm-hmm. Like everything's so digital. So I'm like, hey, write it on a piece of paper and just send me a screenshot mm-hmm. on the piece yeah. of paper. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think our first one was like Riley Hawk, and our second one was Anthony Popolardo, and they wrote it. And then I give it to my brother who makes music. His name's Mishnah. And he's on, well, he's on a label called Ghostly. So he makes mm. electronic music. Oh, okay. uh, and then he would take those, mix them down. Sometimes we'll have the skater write it in a different order. Just we'll suggest, hey, it might go better this way. Yeah. Oh, with the flow. Of yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because like some people will do like a really jerky mix and that works to some degree. But then sometimes it's like hip hop, rap, hip hop, rap, hip hop. It's like, just oh. put the three songs together. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I got you. you. Know? Right, right. Um, it was it was fine. Actually, we took a break because we're on number 100. Mm-hmm. And wow. we wanted to do someone special. Uh, or not special, but, you know, you. out of we the ordinary. We had Tony Hawk for episode. Yeah, 100. yeah. We yeah. wanted to get someone out of the ordinary. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's just hard to get someone remarkable. And also, I didn't want to do a skater. So oh. I was like trying to reach out. Like I hit up, um, who did I hit up? I mean, like we were thinking of like Danzig and like all these other ones, and just get something. Tanya, I would, yeah. I'll, I'll do it, bro. Dude, dude, I'll you're on, do it, bro. You're number one. Yeah, this is awesome. what we've been waiting <laughs> yeah. for. Thank you, bro. I'll yeah. do it, dude. You don't have to pull my leg. But um, that's amazing, though. All these little aff- didn't didn't you want to uh, put out an album of of skaters that like yeah yeah oh, yeah uh, rapped or something or yeah, what was that all no, about? No, no, no rapping. It, no, wasn't rapping. No, no. Oh, we, I try to step uh, keep clear of the skate rap okay, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. let's just say we've never Tread seen lightly. it done successful sure to sure. some degree but you curated yellow an album you put huh yellow wolf yellow oh. yeah there you go yeah that's well, oh, you, and also there is like um um jay what? casanova <laughs> no oh. no um sage it's sage duh. oh okay, sage. yeah sorry i'm yeah. sometimes i just blank on yeah. names um Oh, and not Kel, though. Nikhil, yeah. Nikhil. yeah. So there are a couple of skaters yeah. recently that have been doing it. Sure. So you have Sage and you have Nikel, uh-huh. but they're pretty, it's pretty new and they're pretty exceptions to the rule. Historically, mm-hmm. it's been pretty muddled. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I really like Nikhil stuff. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, they're legit good. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is, which is sick. And you can tell because they have a following. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fully back. Some. Like the skating stuff almost just was like the door, but then they had to, perf- and they did it. Yeah. yeah like yeah, I, I went to, I saw Nikel perform and people love him mm-hmm. and he's good and he has good energy. Yeah. He's got great energy. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. so those guys, whatever. So we put out a record, um, in 2015, cause a lot of people submit, we just don't want to be one thing. We kind of try to do as much as possible. That makes sense. Yeah. You know? So music was always like a super big part of my life. So, um, we got all these music submissions and we're like, Hey, these readers, you know, they do all, all sorts of things. We put out a call and, uh, we made a compilation of 19 tracks and we put them on uh, vinyl and digital. People sent them to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have people like Pop Tart Pete, who's like Jamal Smith, who just went pro. Oh, on. sick. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so we have those type of people. We have. Um, yeah, I was looking at the list. I didn't recognize any names, yeah. but obviously. Because they're all like their aliases. Right. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, of course, I'm freezing up, but we had about three or four like pro skaters on there and then we had like three or four industry people like this guy justin who works for diamond oh wow uh, and his wife were like a duo and it's all all genre Um, okay and so that was kind of like a 
we were like, hey, let's do a record label, you know? It's amazing. Yeah. And, um, and it's done really well. We put out another record last year, which made all sorts of, like, Pitchfork best of 2019 and stuff. Oh, wow. Which was super sick. Um, it's called the Ace Moma record. And they're all, they're two skaters from, we met in LES. Huh. And they make, like, techno, house, and drum and bass-ish type music. Wow. Um, or beats. So... It was Crazy. cool. That's de- something we're definitely going to try to keep pushing. Yeah. We have a project we're working on with a, we're like collaborating with another record label, which is cool. There you go. And then um, trying to do things that like fit outside the sphere. Also talking with MoMA, trying to do some sort of classes there. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, stuff that just feels fresh, feels different. I like it. Well, yeah. Cause... Well, they keep doing what you're doing, bro. Yeah. Because you're, ki- you're, you guys are, you're, you're killing it. Man. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, you've it's been killing it. the fresh for, air. T- yeah. Thanks. Seriously, I yeah. love it, bro. Appreciate it. Likewise, not nice, just like, you're, you're creating good, fun content, yeah, and watch. you're thinking outside the box. Yes, thanks, that's, thanks. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah, I think we all are. Like, you can only do so. You know, you can only do so much so long. And if I'm bored, then that's a problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think oh, yeah. we all know it's like when you're bored, we have to change something. Totally. Right? You know, and even if it's makes stuff worse. It's still better than not doing anything. At least you're doing something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, skating's fun. Yeah. It should be, we should be having fun with this. Yeah, you know? 100%. That's a place for seriousness, but, you know, let's have fun. Yeah. And always thinking, like, do. it doesn't have to be just skateboarding. Yeah. It could be fun stuff that's in, involved with skateboarding. You know 100%. What I mean? mm-hmm. Yeah. As I said, growing up, skating is the car on fire going through the bushes. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Like, that's as much skateboarding to me as doing a kickflip. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, I like it both. You need both. Yeah. What's your best trick? Flat grounds. Yeah. Maybe like a backside heel. Back heel. Oh, yeah. It's, okay. not, it's not super pretty, but I got them. Yeah, but that's an that's an that's yeah, an awkward. It's, trick, it's like though. one of the you know when when you who has your best back uh, heel? You think? Uh, Jeremy Ray. Does he do Ooh. pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. He's wow. a Jeremy Ray is just like I remember one of those trick tips where he's t- teaching you how to. I didn't realize when you first learned to skateboard that the heel flip is actually with the heel. I was doing it like a kick flip kind of yeah. where you put your foot. Not but that. if you learn from Jeremy, you're, yeah. you're looking at his feet and his feet are completely squared regardless of yeah, it's what crazy. he's doing. So I was like learning it kind of like the wrong way. And then now, you know, I put my foot way, way up and do it kind of easier that way. Sure, and sure. Like this t- you thought it was the heel foot because the heel was on that side of the board? I just, I didn't realize that the heel actually hit. You yeah. know? <laughs> I was like kicking out, like kicking down and out, yeah. you know, when you start. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, oh, that's why I'm getting this bruising here because it's actually hitting my heel <laughs> properly. <laughs> 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 Not heels. bruising, but the you see it on the shoe. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, backside heel. Okay. I mean, all the casual stuff, yeah. kickflip, you know, whatever. Used to stay, skate stairs. Okay. But like, that was when you wanted to be Jamie Thomas, you know? Right. Like, seven, eight stairs, backside 180, that sort of stuff. Okay. And mm. it's fun. I mean, I'm still skating a lot, but just <laughs> more good. just for to actually chill and release, you know? Yeah, you yeah. have to. Because yeah. I imagine Escape. for you guys too, this all gets in the way of skating. <laughs> oh yeah. Unfortunately. Totally. Well, the best part is, is now that you don't have to skate for a living, you can have fun skateboarding. Yeah. When it's just like this well, he never f- really skated for a living. Yeah, now. yeah. I know, but but he's I, saying just for him. Yeah. For him, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say for all of us now, we have something else to focus on. Right. And then skateboarding is just like this such a fun activity, which it always is. Well, it's right. a part of your yeah. life. It's a part yeah. of your life, and you're just kind of like, it just it's more desirable almost in a weird way. Yeah. Uh, doing it as a job is. It's a job, dude. Dude, when you know? I picked up a camera, a skateboard, and took a back seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. You know? I was like, oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to shoot all these other guys and put my skater on hold. Right. As soon yeah. as Roger's trying a trick, somebody wants to film. Yeah. Now it's like, I just want to go skate. Yeah. I, re- I remember I interviewed Dave Carney, and Carney's like, I'm like, what's the hardest thing about working and skating? And he's like, staying on my skateboard. And I didn't know what that meant at that time. Yeah. I was like, haha, funny, like, <laughs> dumb joke. I didn't yeah. mean anything. Right. I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, I have to work on this thing so I can go skate, you know? Yeah. It makes you appreciate skating more when, yeah. you know, as a skater, you'd wake up and just wonder what are, where am I going to skate today? Now you wake up, you have to work, you have to get episodes out, you have to do all this stuff. Now when we go skate, it's like... We have a window. You're, yeah, yeah, you have that window and you're like, fuck, I fucking love this, man. I was having so much fun. Yeah. I don't want to film a video part. I want to go have fun. Yeah, yeah. I want to skate with my boys. For Chris and I, it's like... From two to five, like on Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh, or seriously? Like that. No, I'm on, I'm in the like yeah, yeah, skate eight to ten and then go do work or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. Know? like almost like a gym routine, and then it feels whack. Yeah. And then you can't go. You know when you're feeling good that day, and you're like, yo, I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go to this thing I've been thinking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you kind of don't get that. You're like, oh, right, recess ends now. Yeah. you know. Do you take naps? I ch- I used to, but now oh, yeah? I, with no, the, like, with no. the office, really? it's hard. You now. Like a little couch in there, and take a little half hour no, power nap. Get a little bunk bed in there, like yeah. the Seinfeld. Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, our office is tiny. It's like that corner. 
Oh, seriously? It's, it's, it's how far away from the office do you live? It's 15 minutes walk. Okay. So you couldn't go back home, take a little quick. No, I, um, I but love naps. The get, naps get a boost board. When you're editing, yeah. it works so well. Oh my God. You nap and then you come back to it and it's. Well, no, my, you know what I do? I go throughout my whole day. I edit at night. Yeah. Because nobody's around. My phone's not ringing. Right. I could just focus in on it. I have my TV going. My cat Larry's chilling. You know, everything's. The day's done. Yeah. Before I edit, nap time. Take a little, I take a little hour nap. I set my alarm, hour, 45 minutes, mm-hmm. whatever. Six o'clock, whatever. Take a nap till seven. Boom. Start editing. That's the best. And then I'll get a text at three in the morning, like, episode's done. Yep. Damn. And I'll get up at like six. Start going for it. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to know about I me? Or, uh, <laughs> <the night club>? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I was like, dude, this is... Especially because you're not editing them anymore. I mean, it's the way enough. Three hours. I could. I feel like I should be an hour maximum. Well, we're still no. editing them. We're just. We're looking for. Editors. No, I know. I know. I'm fooling around. Okay. <laughs> you're just. You're just going lot more long form now. It's fun. It's just kind of like how it all goes, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's been super interesting, man. I love it. I love the business you've built. I love that you're keeping it going. Love all the content you guys are coming out with. Thanks. Love it, dude. I I can't wait to and do I that. I love that you look at skateboarding from a, the outside perspective. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm lucky that I was in New York. I mean, I was lucky that I was an outsider. Yeah. You know, now you're an insider. Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Dude. Every, I see all these people at the bar now. I'm like, I got to get back to New York. <laughs> no, because I like it. You know, I like everyone. And I'll yeah. have a drink with someone that I don't necessarily I, I'm not psyched on their skating, but they're cool people. Right. So then it's like, ah, oh, I can't joke on that dude anymore. I can't joke on that dude anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's fuck, the funny thing with like, skateboarding. Like, you might. From an outsider, like, you're like, oh, that guy's got a wax style, whatever. Yeah. And then you meet him, like, fuck, he's awesome. Like, yeah. Why did I ever talk to you that's about the that? Hard, that's the hardest thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so we have to be super selective about, like, who we're who we're playing with, you know? Yeah. And even if they're in on the joke, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, maybe that happens as well. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we guys, just made uh, fun of Mike Ta- Mikey Taylor for being, like, uh, we said most likely to end up in a white collar prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, like, he's wrote back. He's like, uh-huh. And then all his friends or whatever other people are like totally man (laughs) yeah and yeah i I mean it's rad yeah yeah it's rad when people can take a joke because we definitely need it listen man if you can't make fun of yourself come on bro you know like life's too short let's have fun yeah don't take yourself too seriously you know seriously yeah Yeah. seriously um can we give you some nine club stuff to take back to you do you have room in your bag to take home i'll add an extra bag pay that fee 25 bucks we can ship it yeah we can ship it also nah nah bring it in yeah you blessed us with some Jankum bags, so. Oh, how's that uh, Smirnoff doing? <laughs> All right. Hey. hey Baby's ooh. babysitting. Yeah, I should have brought that out later and not got a jump on. <laughs> <laughs> you live and you learn, though, right? It's all happening live. Yeah. Um, what size do you wear, bro? Large? Medium? Medium, large. Large medium, is fine. So large? Okay. Right. You know Tell when me. you're right between, where it's like a medium unwashed is perfect. It's, yeah. A large washed is perfect. Perfect. You know, perfect. Kinda, yeah. it's, it's either or. Yeah. yeah. What else, dude? What else is going on, bro? When you go back home, right? Yeah. You're out here for what? A week? Two weeks? Yeah, I, I came for uh, like a. I got here on the first. On the first. So it's what this? Whatever. I've been here a week. So you go home. I mean, you can work anywhere in the world now, right? Internet, computers. To, yeah, to a I can. Extent, I, to, right? to, to, to a certain extent, because yeah. I still work with my my team. Sure. Yeah. You get back into New York. Do you go back to work the next day, or do you take a yeah, little break? Yeah. Um. No, because. So I, I'm flying out tonight and I'm on a red eye. Mm-hmm. I back, uh, get back in at six. Okay. And then I want to be there at 10, handing over the content we got from this week. Oh, gotcha. So I'll try like how, kind of how you guys do it. Like mm-hmm. I want to get that moving as quickly as possible because right. I've been kind of away and Thank you, some bro. things have been on hold. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll try to just take a break. Like I'll push through and take a break maybe like early next week or later that week. and okay. take a day for myself to like do laundry and, you know. You know yeah, what I mean? It, it's so good to um have time for yourself yeah and working yeah. is great you know you're yeah. building a business i get it we 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 go through the same thing here but you yeah. you have to have time for yourself man you no, gotta you gotta re you, you gotta um decompress i know you know that's what this trip has been i mean i've been working but it's like i'm with a camera and having fun right. every time and i'm not like stuck behind a computer mm-hmm. it that gets like so doesn't it are awesome. you shooting everything yourself no i have a shooter but mm-hmm. i sometimes like you know we trade off sometimes yeah. and Sometimes I'll be like, if you have a relationship with the person or I have a better relationship, we'll switch okay. to kind of get the, the, the vibe going. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Dude, thank First you. First of all, bro. Thank you so thank much, you, dude. dude. Thank, thank you, guys. You. You're yeah. the man, dude. Oh, sh- Jankum Magazine, bro. Thank you. I was so scared that you were going to make fun of me. I came pretty I came pretty light. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. Thank God, bro. It's fine, I, honestly, I, I saw you at the... Uh, 
the little real video premiere, and you're like, I've been doing my research. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. No, 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 like, no, we, have, we haven't you? done anything. No, yeah, I've been, I mean, I, I was going to do it, but honestly, I've been filming so much, I didn't have time to do yeah. it all. That's what happens. Yeah, it's fine. You're yeah, naturally good at just doing it. So yeah. you don't have to come prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. But yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's worse than when someone comes in and is ready to like. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, have, they have material. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm like, dude, I get it. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure. Listen, bro, you're uh, are you, you're a hat guy. I you am. Know, you guys, you got great hair. Well, man. thank you. You got great hair. I've been trying. He's to, young. He's gonna. Yeah. yeah. Show it off. Hey, and people are balding fast though. Yeah. I mean, no one we know. <laughs> I'm nodding my head towards Raj. Uh, no, here's a nine club Thank new you. new era hat for you. Nice. Um, I know you 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 mentioned that you're doing a little courthouse piece. Yeah, you know, yeah. Little thing, but here's a. These guys sponsor you, newer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, good shit. They're, they're they're great, man. Okay. Great they're hats. Good. Great. Hey, hats. I mean, they're the standard. Oh my god. They really are. Except yeah. for FlexFit. FlexFit's kind of come back. Really? Oh, it's think gonna so? come back. Yeah. Has it? Why? Dude, Fubu came back. Something. You know, everything's cyclical. <laughs> it's pretty boring. Whenever one thing's big, just start betting on the other thing. FlexFit. Oh, I couldn't opposite. even imagine wearing a FlexFit. Right. Hat. Sorry, FlexFit. Everyone's Dude. shooting VX. Go HD. Everyone's shooting HD. Fucking go back to cassette. <laughs> yes. Where's Fubu coming back? Uh, I think they're ready on their way, huh? I don't know. I, I haven't seen know. it out here. I don't. I should nah. follow their Should-y Instagram. New York thing. Yeah, it's probably New York. Nah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's looking pretty weird out there now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have a Twitter I can follow. Yeah. Fubu Here's and a, uh, Flexfit. <laughs> there's With a those two. Yeah, there's Fubu and Flexfit hats. Switch flip manual mug for All you, right, bro. Yeah, just just yeah. W- yeah, let's get it. That's uh, here's a uh, large T for you as well. Cool. And a. XL, just my size. Well, we, we'll trade it in. Kelly just grabbed some shit. You're getting buff, so it's like... The, the truth you know, is, oh, yeah. we have like no fucking... <laughs> Let me ask you a question, bro. You have product. Yes. Product's a hell of a game. It is gnarly. People you, you keep, keep asking me, when are you, why don't you guys could do a fat... You could do this and that. I'm like... It's well, a lot of time. Do you want to do it? Do you know what goes into it? Dude, yeah, people yeah. just think, oh, you just screen a shirt. Or whatever. It, there's yeah. a lot of fucking shit that goes into it, yeah. bro. And then you got to house it and move yeah. it. Yeah. I remember Roger skating in Jankum sweatshirt at the beach in the summertime. I still rock the thing. Yeah. Yeah. But he was, I yeah, love yeah, that. I love, I love <laughs> that sweatshirt. That's it, a good, uh, yeah. the, the base, the body. It's the funny thing. I hit you up like, hey, you want to trade sweatshirts? Yeah. yeah. I'm down. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. Anyway, here's a crew neck for you, bro. Sweet. Thank you. And a uh, crab. Yeah, the, full, the full thing. Yeah. Get a crab. Muska. Nice. That's probably that's me with a microphone there. Nice. Krabska. And uh, we have candles. We have, um, this is a La Crab. We'll let you open it, man. Pample Moose. Is great. this uh, Rob Brink approved? Rob Brink made them. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah. That's our go. collaboration with Hunter Baker. Go. That's a go. grapefruit scent. Pample Moose. Yeah, yeah. La Croix. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. La Crab. Nice. Man, there you <laughs> go, bro. Look at that. Can you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> It's good. Bring it's to the office. Bring to that, yeah. Oh, office. I actually, I bring you candle. Yeah, yeah, I do. Candle I do. guy. Yeah. Love dudes in the room, pardon. <laughs> dude, thank you so much, dude. dude this has been you. fucking fabulous, bro. Yeah, we did it. We, we somehow did it. Like I said, keep killing it. Do, <laughs> do your you. thing. Love Jankum. Thank you. It's incredible, man. Got the book behind you. Fucking incredible. Yeah, volume three coming sooner than longer. How long does it take you to do a book? That one took, it takes about, it's a year project, but okay. since we're doing a video with the next book, it's taken a little oh, longer. Oh, wow. Yeah. A year Damn. with a video. Wow. Well, the ship, I mean, it, it's a, it's a fucking headache, man. <sighs> but you're so, it's the be- best feeling when you get it. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. How, how far out are you on like getting articles done? It depends on the time of the year and, and weather and how much content we're stacking. I'd say uh, right now we're like a month ahead. Mm. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Okay. But, it's but, it's, us. but it's very loose. Like th- we have the month of skeleton mm-hmm. and then it'll be like, okay, but this is me missing a header. This is me missing an intro. This is missing like s- stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. And um, we try to be two weeks ahead on like stuff. But okay. I mean, we've been, hey, we need something today and pulled shit out. Do you have a certain like, hey, we we put out four things a week, five things we, yeah, a week. Yeah, we, we try to do three a week. Three, for, three a week. For the most part, we do, uh, that's pretty normal. Well, Are you on a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday? Th- or what? It's, I mean, it's Monday, pretty Wednesday, much, Wednesday, we Friday? want, I want Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, oh. but it's very ideal. Yeah. It's very hard yeah. to do it. And like, you can have content planned for Monday, but then you could get a text from someone being like, hey, I just want to edit one more thing. And then you got to push it to Tuesday. Oh, right. And then, hey, we should include that. We should push it to Thursday. Yeah. So there's some weeks when it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Some weeks when it's Monday, Friday. Like in some way it's in unpredictable and it's okay. Which is good though. Yeah. Because it's going to keep people coming back to your site. Yeah. Because they don't know like 
what what's we'll, one thing's gonna be a drop in like yeah. for us like everyone knows mondays and wednesdays for us yeah yeah you know but again that's good for building like consistency yeah. there's positives well, i would love you, to be able you, to surprise people yeah yeah you know? but, but you, you youtube's hell of, uh, a hell of a beast yeah so you have to be that consistent oh it helps with like it pushing your stuff just growing and, and getting yeah. people yeah, accustomed being, to being that. consistent whatever like it just keeps coming people yeah. it becomes uh part of someone's like schedule yeah. Like they're like, oh, Monday is my fucking nine club day. I don't think and you see that in the comments. Like yeah. people are writing jokes, but also it's real. Like that's part of their life. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we would be here if we just, you know, we're like throwing out episodes Willy whenever. Nilly, like, yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be But consistent. take breaks, dude. Like there's yeah. no reason to burn out and like it makes it more real when you're just We're going like, to take more breaks this year. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, we don't. <laughs> but at the same time, we're going to work harder this year too. Well, yes. you're going to make better content, make it more interesting because you have the breaks. Yeah. Because yeah. right. you guys are human. You're like, all right, let's reconfigure this week. 2020. It's going to be a good year for both of us. It's it's going to be a, an epic one. 2021, you wanted to do the uh, beer pong. Well, oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do the collab. You, uh, yeah, Jankum and Nine Club. Can't wait for that big beer pong tournament beer after pong. 10 years of it's working gonna, on Jankum. It's going to be a big thing, that dude. That could be fun. Oh, <laughs> so bad. You want to go grab some sushi or something? Yeah, let's get some food. I'm yeah. dying here. I'm starving right now. There's something around the block, right? How about beer pong down the street? I'll, I'll actually play beer pong right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> no, you'll play it.